Welcome, welcome to the show where we think we know everything, but we really don't know shit. But what we do know is Halloween, scary. My costume is a disgruntled Bears fan. I'm here in LA and I went to the game the other day and I was pissed the fuck off at what I saw. Yeah, pissed off, probably like a lot of you all were. Yeah, I mean, Tyson Bajan, can we please dispel that Tyson Bajan is going to be QB1 shit? Can we stop saying that finally? He's not going to be QB1. He's a backup. And, you know, he did really do a piss poor job the other day, but he missed some throws. He did miss some throws. I'm not going to call him a game manager like JB did, but he he kind of dropped the ball. No pun intended. The other day he dropped the ball. He did. But, I mean, it wasn't all his fault. You know, the call sucked. The referee sucked. Some of the players sucked. Moody, Moody caught a deep pass, but then after that, it's like he left the build. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Where the fuck Moody go? I mean, man, it was, it wasn't a shit show, but it was a shit show. But anyway, I'm here in LA and at least I'm not in the snow. It's snowing in Chicago right now. I'm not in that. It's 70 degrees right now. The sun is setting and it's beautiful over the beach. I'm in a, I'm in a beach house and on the balcony. Oh my God, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm not bragging right now. I'm not bragging. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just bring in my guys because I know they have a whole lot to say. But first, you know what it is. We're going to do this. You are now rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. Where they think they know everything, but honestly, they don't know shit. Summer League games, and they tell you about these new up and coming coaches. I think we should get rid of every motherfucking owner in Chicago. Enzo and Caruso both been there on the quarter like your defensive generals. But they need to get that strong safety who's not scared to hit somebody.
They really don't know shit. Sorry about that, guys. I was trying to wipe the sand out my ass, so I hit the wrong button. But we're back. We're back. And welcome to the podcast where we think we know everything, but we really don't know shit. But who does? Who does? Except for the people who lived it. And speaking of people who lived it, tonight we have a guest who definitely lived it. And he's a legend. And if you're not over, if you're not over 35, you may not know who we, well, 35, 40. If you're not over 40, you probably won't know who he is, but he's a Bears legend and you need to go study up on him. Offensive tackle, Keith Van Horn. Yes. Let me say it again. Keith Van Horn is in the house. Clap. God damn it. Clap. So first, before we bring in Keith, we're going to bring in the All-Star team, starting with my man who knows every single stat from every single team since the 80s and 90s, basketball and football, my man JB. Get a little happy. Get a little happy with the button. Yeah, man. I'm still trying to wipe the sand down my ass, man, from the beach, man. I'm trying to do two things at once, man. What's going on, though? Man, ain't you on some mess? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm low-key bragging right now. For, you are, but first of all, you know what I'm saying? I'm pumped up because we got a guest, one of my... Oh, when we talk about the past and we talk about what we had and what we have the, the, looking in the future... It starts with this group right here, and this is one of the main guys on that group. Love this man. Have, have just can't got a ton of questions for him. So I'm. It might be a long one, y'all. Buckle up. <laughs> as far as uh, what happened Sunday, albeit I'll fall on the sword. Tyson Bajan is who we thought he was, or who I thought he was, and the Chargers did not let him off the hook. Period. Shout out to Denny Green. Um, I was about to say, you definitely channeled Denny Green on that. I mean, I just, I, I have to because the, the thing, the thing is this, I said last week, yes, I, I said he played well. He, he managed the game very well. And it's nothing wrong being a game manager. We've seen game managers hold the, fo hold the fort. We've seen them. Matter of fact, we, we're going to talk to our guests about a backup game manager holding the fort and what that can do to win some games until, you know, the star come back. We talk to that brother about that. Because here's the thing. When you put too much on at one time, we become prisoners of the moment too much. This microwave society, it is what it is. I mean, the kid the kid threw two guaranteed picks and almost threw three more, five, and a fumble. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's more than just a bad day at the office. And his people didn't help him out no more. Velvet Jones? Ooh. Oh, we going we gonna to get on Velvet. We are we are going to get on velvet, and I, yeah, I called him velvet. I usually never say that, but he deserves to be called velvet today. So let's bring in our other guys, man. Next up, a guy who probably has the foulest mouth in the city, and I think he is fully costumed. Let's bring him in, foul mouth. See, what up, fellas? Foul you scary, man. you scary. Hey, now, first of all, I was told as long as I don't have any weapons, you don't mess with us. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. bullshit. I, I thought that's how the predator work. If we don't have no weapons, the predator don't fuck with us. No, that's yeah, not how it works. He said he ain't that type of predator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> from the other side. That's it. Uh, okay. So what's up with you, foul mouth? Nothing that's cold ass weather. Did you go trick or treating, man? Nah, I ain't do that. Nah, they probably it's wouldn't open their door no fucking way. <laughs> I wouldn't open the door for your ass. 
Hell no, nah, I feel like I'm an alien versus predator right now. Shit, it was cold as hell doing that movie. Hey, can I ask you a question though? How hard is it to breathe in there? Because you got like this muffled Darth Vader thing going on. Oh. <laughs> Put that back. Put that back. That's Put cold. Back. Hey, you, that's cold. That and you do it every year, dude. You support, you never cease to amaze me, man. Every year you stretch you you. I thought you was gonna be the you know be put there. it back. <laughs> put it back. Put it back. Oh my god. Don't take that shit off no more. <laughs> All right, let, let's bring in the other guy who uh usually has that hawk talk. I don't know how much we're gonna talk about the hawks today. Uh, my man, Frank the Tank. And I, I think Frank the Tank is fully costumed, too. Dang, what in the world? What, uh, what's the hell going on? What's going on in the production truck? <laughs> I'm hey, still waiting for his hand on my ass, I guess. <laughs> Here he is, Frank the Tank. God damn it. Oh. Come on, Frank. I, my hands are Stop up. Stop fucking around. I didn't touch the computer. Stop jamming your finger on the keyboard. No, you. I think you were trying to bring I never up. touched my computer. You Don't you blame me. Never Maybe touched was, the computer. Maybe it was my fat ass finger. It could be them fatty fingers, man. Hey, we got a B-lister. Luigi, we got a B-lister. I love how, I love how Luigi, L for love, you know, I just noticed that. I just thought of that. Um, And I follow Predator for fuck. Yeah, you it to Luigi. How about that being what that's a like, letdown? That's like the bearish from last week to this week. What predator to Luigi? They just keep oh. that motherfucking mask on. And as you can see, I did go trick or treat. <laughs> You're like a, a kid friendly, you have a kid friendly costume on, Frank. Well, my son was Mario, my daughter was Princess Peach, and you were the sidekick. I'm always a sidekick. A couple okay. years ago, I was Robin. He was Batman. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm always a sidekick when you get That's perfect. That's perfect, though. I mean, you look perfect. You look perfectly like Luigi. Like you about to go make a pizza or something. I wish. Dude, that's <laughs> good right homemade, pre homemade pizza? <laughs> homemade pizza, man. Okay, so before we even talk about the game, we're going to bring in our guest. Like I said, I mean, damn that game. I want to talk to the guest, man. Like for real, yes. for real. right? So man, we that want to talk about with that. Talk to our game. guest first. Like I said, he's legendary. Won Super Bowl eighty five, and also I said, if you're not over forty, probably don't know who he is. Um, any Bear fan knows who this fucking guy is. Well, I know who this guy is. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but they probably haven't seen him play. That is true. Probably haven't seen him yes, play. That is true. Give so, me that. Oh, I don't know today. Probably know who he is, but you haven't seen him play. But you're about to get this wisdom from him tonight. That's for damn sure. So let's bring him in. Super Bowl champ and Chicago legendary offensive tackle, Keith Van Horn. Clap. Tell us to clap. What's the other thing? Clap. You're not even clapping. You tell us to clap and you don't even clap. What's up, Keith? How you doing, Terrence? Hello, Keith. Good, Good. Man. Good. Nice to see you guys. Good and, to uh, see you. I love the Predator uh, outfit. I the two the two best mon lap monsters in the last I don't know how many years. The alien and the predator. Those are the two. That, you know, right. it, that's as right. opposed to the, the, the uh, original universals, you know, Frank. Oh! Yeah. I like I that one. Ugly motherfucker. <laughs> That's what they said in the movie. Yeah, Arnold, hey, Arnold. That's what Arnold Schwarzenegger said. Girl. Yeah, right. Ugly <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, God, man. Put that mask back. I can't even concentrate. <laughs> oh, shit. It would be better, though, if you talk and the teeth go up. That would be oh, so God. badass. Oh, I just want to know, hey, Predator, did you stalk Grogu? Did you string hey, Grogu up somewhere? He ain't Grogu. He <laughs> messed up, man. Oh, hey, he lived. <laughs> it's just a bite. So, Keith. <laughs> Baby Yoda. Yes. <laughs> he is a big part of this show. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up, Grogu? 
the force. Man, that sounds like yeah. you're constipated, man. What's going on? Yeah, that was a bad one. You might want to check his diaper after that. Oh, one. there you go. Oh, so, Keith, I want to start out with this question. How did it feel back then to be a dominant, not, on, not just the Super Bowl champion, but dominant? Like, you all killed everybody. How did that feel? Well, the, you know, the first six games, maybe, we, uh, I think we came back from behind to win those games. So that, you know, it didn't start out like we were that way, but we, that was good because we knew how to come back and win. And then, then it pushed forward from there. And, uh, with a defense like we had and, uh, offensive line like we had, uh, you know, we were, we had some good players on that team and, and they, uh, and they were, and, and good teammates, which is key. So, um, it was a lot of fun. Let me put it that way. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and you'll never see it again. Uh, you know, it's not only – you may see somebody win that many games, but you won't see a – Not a as dominant as you guys. That or, or just the people on the team, characters, and, you know, just the whole right. the whole show. It was good. Definitely not the Bears. We won't see the Bears like that. No, it'll be a long time. Yeah, not with Especially the way things are. As as Virginia McCaskey is the owner. Well, you know, she's like a hundred, I think now. Um, she, no, she is a hundred. Yeah, I mean, literally. Yeah, yeah. No, I meant that. Yeah, I knew that. But uh, a part, you know, that's uh, when you, she's got. I think there's nine or ten. I think there's nine kids still alive from the eleven. And I'm not sure how many are involved in the, in the Bears, but I think two. You think know, two are involved. When she dies, is going to be interesting because you're going to see the two factions. Like, who we still want to keep the Bears? We want to sell it. Uh, you know, I don't know, but uh, I don't. Know. We'll see what happens. But it's uh, yeah. We I got. Uh, I told you a couple of stories, so we can talk about those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how that unfolds. But something needs to happen. Something needs to happen because you can't just uh, you can't just keep on banging your head against the wall and expecting a different result. And that's that's exactly what the Bears are doing. And it starts with the top. And Virginia McCaskey is at the top, whether she's making the decisions or not. She's at the top. Yeah, I don't think she's doing much at that well, age. I don't think she's doing much. Probably not as much as she used to, but trust me, they they got to clear things through her. Trust me, you know, she's uh she's the matriarch. She's just, uh, but um, yeah. Well, you also got to understand it. Again, it does start from the top and trickles down, but you you know this is three different, uh, basically three different regimes that are all thrown together. Mm -hmm. nobody's had a chance to really build this quarterback. He's he, they came in with the quarterbacks here. Same thing happened with uh, Cutler and uh, you know, so you, it, it's not until somebody all gets on the same page that something's going to be successful. And you, you got to do that. The, the base of it has to be through the draft. So uh, we'll see how he, this pans out. You know, I don't know what's going to happen after this year in terms of the coaches or uh, any of that, but uh Yes, yeah, something. It's it's an ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly. And he wasn't alone. You you were right, JB. He's he had help, but uh, yeah, he's you know you you can't run the ball with somebody that's your backup. You're in big trouble. So uh, yeah. and uh, they couldn't run the ball. They had a few hits, but like the Raiders and against the Raiders, they ran the ball very well. So it makes it a lot easier on a quarterback. Trust me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll say this to that because you all were one of the greatest units. You're one of the greatest right tackles, and you had the arguably the greatest running back. So we know the value. You know the value of running the ball and especially protecting because that, that little stretch I was talking about when I said you know something about a game manager coming in, that would be one Steve Fuller, right? He came in for about five games, right? Yeah, Fuller. He got hurt, right? Yeah, yeah. I had I oh shit my thirteen years. I had, I played for about thirty quarterbacks. I don't Woo! know. I, it might be twenty seven. I'm like what, every bear. It's what, uh, what, it's what a high number. Right it's a high number. But you know, and if you look at the Packers, what they've had three in the last thirty 
five years, 32 years, oh, something like that. that, something like that. So, you know, that's a problem in and of itself, <laughs> but yes, you gotta be able to, you're right. Steve came in and did a good job. And, and, uh, because we could control the, the time of possession and the line of scrimmage, uh, that made, makes it all a lot that better. And you're right. We did have Walter. Well, in my opinion as well, the greatest all around back he's ever played. He could do it all. Uh, we, I think we could have used them even better out there, coming out of the backfield, throwing the ball to them more. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, because our offense was not difficult. To, <laughs> everybody knew what we were going to do. Walter you know? Wright. Walter so, Wright. Walter Wright. Walter Wright. Walter Wright. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they had seven, eight guys in the box, and we still were running a bomb. So, but, you know, it's nice to have some variety. But uh, we, we got it done, so. Yeah, but you guys were still, uh, Keith, during that time, I mean, if you look at old stats, you guys were still running for 200-plus yards in those games when they knew you all couldn't pass the ball. Yeah, like, exactly. Crazy. Didn't I mean, matter. We, we led the league in rushing four years in a row, which no team's ever done. I think the Bears did it in 40, 39 to 43 or something. I don't know. But then we were in a seven-year stretch. We either were led the league, we were either second or third. So seven years – running the ball like that and people know what you're doing, which is why my back is so fucked up now. But <laughs> we thank you for your service, sir. Yeah, uh, carried a lot. Parents, parents saw me <laughs> stumbling around, although there was some tequila involved. <laughs> yeah. Hey. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So so Keith, what um what do you think about these bears today? <laughs> Starting with that offensive line. Well, you know, I was reading something. They've got four different guys who played center so far. And I think the line, the starting lineup's been seven different combinations. Last year it was nine yeah. different combinations. You can't win like that, period. Um, you got to have stability there. They have to play together. Um, we played together for like seven years, you know, without, I mean, guys get hurt here and there, but it wasn't like th this team. So that's a major issue there. Um, there's a couple of the guys that shouldn't even be here anyway, but they're here. Um, I, I have high hopes for the right side. If they, with, right. uh, yeah, with, um, What's his name? Right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. right. I think he's going to be a good, good player. He he needs he and he's doing well now, but he needs to he needs to get his hands inside, man. He's really got to get his hands inside, and because these guys just go out to the shoulders and they're going to catch you all the time. So, but he, I, know, I like I know him. These last two games, though, he is dealing with a screwed up shoulder and everything, and it's having a hard time doing those push ups, I, and he's still doing good. You're even talking, with that messed up shoulder. You, you're not. You're preaching to the choir, man. Yeah. I've played with torn me, yeah, yeah. rotator cuffs, torn labrums, you know, so um, I know. But um, – and I like Kevin Jenkins over there with him. I, that, that's a strong combo. Uh, and I like the, – they play hard and they, they go after it. The middle of – you know, and if we could get uh, our left tackle back, I don't know what the deal is with him. I mean, he's out, but – He had a neck injury, and then um, they kind of just took it, you know, kind of like – Put him on IR, but well, I mean, probably he's not smart. the greatest. But Larry Borum is not doing terrible. No, he's yeah, not man, doing yeah. that bad. But you got yeah. the center and left guard situation is terrible. Yeah, that is. yeah it's terrible. Oh, but I mean, answer answer me this too because it's frustrating. Because <laughs> we always talk about coaching on this show. We really do. Last game, I wanted to bring this up too, and I'm glad that got brought up now. We ran the ball 70% to our left side when our right side is our strongest. I, I, I like that's an interesting stat. I, I yeah. don't I don't get it. I don't either. Like, I, I agree hundred percent with you. Our left side is weak. We're constantly moving people around and trying to make that as stronger, but it's just it's not right. Well, and again, I just like a hit on the center position. You have four different guys playing it. Yeah, There's right. no continuity at all with the quarterback. I mean uh, white hair still snapping things up in the up in the air. I don't know, you know, why that's going on still, but yeah. Uh, and uh, who played center? Uh, Patrick is that his name? Yeah, Luke Patrick. Patrick. I apologize for the players now. I'm not I, I honestly trying to remember the names. Um, 
Yeah, he got his ass run over quite a few times. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and, and then on the other side, we have no no pass rush whatsoever. So, oh, oh god. Uh, you know. But I, I want to keep the lines, man. Them. Offensive, defensive line. You gotta have. That's your. Yeah, that's where you, you start. First. Then you get your quarterback, and then you got to get. You know, but you got to build from there and go out. Yeah, I mean, we do we do have a second year center right now too. I mean, he's been injured a lot. Uh, Kramer. Yeah, Kramer. That we're hoping he's finally healthy. And frankly, I'd rather see him in there to see what he can do to see if is, we're going to be drafting a center this year. Is he hurt? Is that why? He's well, out? he got hurt in the pre- he got hurt um in training camp and he missed all the preseason. And I think he's been back healthy now for two games. When's it? Early. When did we get him? Uh, two years ago in the draft. What was it, like from the Illinois? Round? Like the fourth or fifth round or something uh, like that. Mm. I think it was a was it was a fourth, fifth, or fifth, sixth. It's Doug, it's Doug Kramer for sure. But the thing is, he, he was a late round. Uh, can't stay healthy. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the problem. Right. With, problem with obviously with the offensive line in general. I mean, t- <coughs> Jenkins has missed a bunch already. Yeah. Um, which you know that's another problem. You got to stay healthy, uh, and that's not always easy to do in this league. But and we know you're going to play with. With a bad shoulder, you're gonna play with a bad knee. If you're on the line, you're gonna play unless you can't walk. So you know that's how that goes. So you got to be able to have the mindset that you could got to go out and do it. You know. So, but I, I I gotta ask this. I gotta ask this. What do you see that the real problem is with that? Because Daddy, Daddy. I mean, and and we gonna go down memory lane. We gonna get in our time machine. Jay Hilgenberg. Then you got Theron Bortz. Then you got Jimbo and you. Like, that continuity, like you said, it took time. But you all, like, clearly you all were together and everything. You all, hey, run or pass, it's not happening. Like, is it the lack of actual talent in the scouting or is it just the coaching? Because everybody's new when you come to a team. Every year you're going to add a piece. You all just happen to stay together together. You know, quite and, and had good health. Let's let's keep it honest. Y'all had good health, thank God. But like, what is it that they're missing? Because I'm looking like this. Even when you add a Nate Davis now and you add a Tevin Jenkins, what is it that they're not getting? <coughs> they haven't been playing together. You know, you got to play together for, and that's where the continuity comes in. You get to know each other. You know, I mean, we we. We hung out together too as an offensive line. I don't know what these guys do, but we would, you know, every Thursday night we went out to dinner, mm-hmm. and the damn quarterbacks would always come because they're looking for a free ride. And, then, <laughs> and, and Kevin Butler too, the damn kicker. I go, what are you doing? <laughs> but it's, uh, we'd go out to dinner every Thursday night, and we, you know, watch a lot of film. And I mean, it's it's just working together and, and being able to practice together. And we were fortunate. I mean, literally seven years, I think, eight years we were together. You know, that's pretty much unheard of now because guys are making money going. I mean, there wasn't free agency then either. So, uh, unfortunately for us. (laughs) But, um, yeah, that's it. It's coaching. I don't even know this. But then injuries as well. It's all those things, you know. You look at that picture behind you, even if you all took a player two off, because most of you all, you, you guys were mm-hmm. Iron Man. You had, you had, we'll call them backups, but you had backup linemen that came in and didn't miss a beat. Yeah, we had some good backups, and we had a good coach. Dick Stanfield was a real good coach. He was old school, but, uh, you know, he was a good coach. Uh, and through the draft, they drafted well. I mean, Bortzi was a what? Uh, shit, what round was Bortzi in? Uh, he was a lower – and he was a defense alignment initially. Uh, Hilgi was an undrafted free agent. I know? remember that one. Um, Jimbo and I were first. Uh, Tom was a – That was 81, 82? I was 81. Jimbo's 83. Okay. The man was 82. Um, BYU, right. I think uh, Tom was a fourth rounder, but he went to the USFL. So uh, then he came to us like, you know, he was probably 80 – what was he drafted? 82, maybe 83. Anyway, so, uh, you know, it's all that. It's all that. And uh, it, it takes a lot of work. It's all repetition. It's technique. 
it's just you know over and over and over again and knowing what each other's thinking and because if this guy doesn't do his job there's five of you it's got to all work together you know um, mm -hmm. it's the ultimate team sport football is so uh you know I, I can't put my finger on one thing but it, those three things together you know uh, without being able to have a steady lineup uh, not being able to play together I don't know what they do in practice if they even practice anymore. You know, these guys don't do shit anymore. So. They don't even play, don't even play in the preseasons or anything. Like, no, I think, which, yeah. I believe, yeah. I believe it was Man, Arnold, it's, it, right? it's all bad nowadays. Yeah. yeah. And they don't, they, nobody could tackle. And not just well, us, most other teams don't tackle. And that's why we brought in this coach for the hits principle. Yeah. All right. Well, hits yeah. principle. Sorry. Yeah, I got your hits mom, principle mom, right here. Who it last, uh, was it the Raiders, right? Last night? No, that yeah. was uh, Chargers. 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 Oh, you know, ready? Not you us. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they couldn't. They didn't work tackling, but either. But um, yeah. Well, and then we get off to start. What was it? Seventeen nothing. Right off yeah, the bat. I mean, with a backup we, quarterback, that's hard to come back. Yeah, that's you put it on him, and now because you're not running the ball, you really didn't have much choice, and it wasn't alone though. I mean, penalties. Oh uh, getting beat on the line, you know, no pass rush. I mean, all this stuff is, it's just an ugly, <laughs> it's an ugly thing. <laughs> Fifth, I think it was like 55 yards worth of penalties just in the first two drives alone. It's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, shit, man. That's Come coaching. On. That's oh, coaching. I, I'm glad you said that because a lot of people don't say that. <laughs> like a lot of people say, no, that's the players. You just need to know how to play. I was like, why do you think coaching is not involved in this? Coaching because they don't matters. work on this shit in practice and they don't hold their people accountable. Now, that's exactly what it is. I mean, hell, if you if you're make doing pay, either then pull his ass out of there, or you fucking in practice, you make them run their ass off, do something. So they go with a clothesline his ass. Oh yeah. So you remember <laughs> you better you gotta focus, man. They got these guys you gotta you gotta hone in on game day. And, uh, you know, be ready to move. That's, you know, anyway, I'm just kind of rambling. I, no, I, you're not rambling. You spot on. And, and that's what I'm trying to understand because year, no, after, year after year after year after year after year. Long, when you retired, that was when um, that was when Wanstead came in, right? My last year was his first year. Right. So that's when the line was still good, but then it started to have ebbs and flows. Then we started drafting people that were hurt. You know, yeah. Lumbo, Gabe Karimi, Chris Williams. Right. You know, yeah. then we had that weird, like, then we went to, like, John Tate from Kansas City. And, and Tate, love John Tate. Love John Tate. Yeah. Well. And, and, you know, we went right back. And now we're, like, on that downswing again. Yeah. Like, is it, it? And that's why I brought up, that's, uh, keep scouting. Like, don't give me the number one pick. Um, What's my man's name? <laughs> Tony Mandridge was that Tony Mandridge, yeah. the incredible bulk. <laughs> Don't give me him knowing that he can't go against real guys, but then tell me the six round pick can't play and you end up being a Hall of Fame type caliber player. Don't yeah. give me that. Yeah, no, that that's your scouting is huge. And, and again, because I my belief is you got to build the, through the draft the core of your team, so your scouting is invaluable. So. Um, you know, I think they will have to see. They've they've made they've had hit on some things. You know, there's some guys, a couple of our DBs, right? You know, and uh, I think our secondary is solid. Yeah, yeah. solid and trending to to. And I actually really, think really our good. linebackers are solid. We got some. Just, all right, we got some guys like out in the secondary though too now, right? They're hurt. A couple guys. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's. A, yeah, Terrence's favorite player. Yeah, keeps the, the secondary has uh. Yeah, the the secondary been banged up the whole season. I mean, one minute yeah. both safeties in, the next minute both safeties out. Then you got one cornerback in, and then you got one cornerback out, then two out. So it it's sort of been like how the offensive line has been. There's been no really yeah, no really yeah. continuity back there either. And that speaks to your defensive line too. Yeah. You know, they get they're not getting pressure. Guys are running through the line, so these these bees have to come up and make tackles. You know, you don't want that happening. You know, you want your linebackers and defensive line to make tackles. But when you got DBs having to come up, uh, you know, they're going to have to do that sometime. But not having to do that a lot all the time, you're in, you're in trouble. I mean, I don't recall us putting any pressure on him. On he that. was untouched. No pressures, no 15, hurries, no 15, sacks. Right? 15, he started off 16 for 16, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. I mean, the and one he got a finger one. up in the air, broken finger, you know. Yeah. Like, right. He got a big old cast. 
But I think, if I'm not mistaken, fellas, his first incomplete, he threw it away, right? No, that was a, that was a penalty, and it was given back to him. It was given back to him. Okay, it see, that's it. it was, I believe his first one was actually a deflected pass at the line of scrimmage. So, yeah, right, was so the first. one I'm talking – right, okay, because the one I was talking about was a penalty. Yeah. And that was his first incomplete. Yeah. See, and see – I mean, he was – he was basically living back there for majority of the game. And it wasn't like yeah. until they were down like damn near 24 that, you know, Evil Fools decided to start bringing the fucking house, start blitzing them. And then next thing you know, oh, here goes the incompletion. Oh, there goes the incompletion. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, they're not really moving the ball like they once was. So we're sitting up here thinking like, why the hell does it take for us to be down double digits for you decide to sit up here and do this when the last couple games – your defense has been playing very well, all because you've been sitting up there playing more, man, and you've been blitzing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have to blitz. You're not getting pressure from your front four. I mean, you don't have a choice. Uh, you got to pick the times, but, uh, you know, and also you got to keep in the run game because they ran the ball pretty damn well against us too. You know, the light, when the linemen are getting up to your linebackers, that's a problem, you know? So, uh, you, you know, Mike Singletary, Hall of Fame player, deservedly so great well, in the long tradition of our line great linebackers he he was untouched most of the time yeah our yeah. defensive line held people <laughs> off of him he could just go wherever you know our it, defensive line manhandled yeah people and it just and made the line, linebackers job when, so when mike was out he was injured which he very rarely was but he was out for a few games and ron rivera started for him rivera had like 15 solo tackles in the first game he started I mean, that's all speaks to – not that Ron's not a capable guy, but the defensive line is just holding people off of him. So, that that's huge. You know, like I said, team game. Team game, it all intertwined, man. And, I mean, I think I have one person on that defensive line I actually like who's the big plugger um, at stopping the run, but he was getting double teamed. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's he was getting double that's teamed because he was game. the only one that's been putting pressure up the middle, yeah. right? And our, what's with uh, who's the yeah. and then we signed yeah, Justin Jones? Oh, God. We, we just we just got Montez. No, Williams. not yeah, yeah, but who's the guy we signed? Yeah, you're, you're talking about Ningakwe. That yeah, guy's talking about Ningakwe. He hasn't I, done I, I'm gonna say this though: Ningakwe is gonna play better now that you got Montez Sweet. Well, because that'll help. Now, he, what do you guys think never, for this? Let me ask. Yeah, you he's this never thing. been the guy when it was just him. Yeah. Well, again, he needs he need teammates to play. Yeah. What what was what's your guys' thought on that? Him and uh between Sweat and uh Chase. Chase Young. Yeah. Chase Young, he, he can't stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. He, he can't stay lost the third round pick, right? And then we, yeah. our, we, we went got, for a third. We, we, yeah. we gave a second and he went for a third to San Francisco. Yeah. And Montez has been pretty healthy, right? For most of his yeah. career. Yeah. For the yeah. most part, yep. Yeah. But here's the thing: with he, that. and he has more sacks than our entire defense this year. So <laughs> he's got six. He's got six and a half by himself. Six and a half. He has six and a half, but that's more than our. Oh yeah. lord. Yeah, yeah that's it, right? Here, here's the here's the thing that that I'm concerned with that Keith is now you brought in one one name, and you're going to expect that name to change your fortunes around. That's not yeah. how this works. No, no, no. Yeah, it doesn't. You're right, and that's. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure about this coaching either on both sides of the ball. So uh, talk about it. Come on now, because look, I don't see a Mike or a Buddy walking mm -hmm. through that door. No, time to see that no, too. no. I, I, you know, but again, who? I'm really gonna, and I'm going forward. But I'm, I'm very interested to see what, uh, what's his name, Kevin, our president, Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren. Yeah. Yeah. Warren. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens here in terms of coaching and possible quarterback position. Right. And you know, and then that'll be interesting to see. Because he he needs to cut. I mean, the reason you have the guy is for him to come in and you know make the team in the way he wants it, right? I mean, and he's not he's not Ted Phillips. This guy actually has some football some, knowledge. You know, he's got some. He's a football guy, right? Right, Ted Phillips, my fucking god! Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh. Hey man, uh, he was there when I was there. That's it. He, god damn, really? The fact that he lived he stayed there that long it tells you, you know, all you need to know about the McCaskey. No, so, Keith, <laughs> can you share with us that great Ted Phillips story you told me? Which one? Which the, one? The Ted Phillips story you told <laughs> me. Ted Phillips story. 
Yeah, the one about the uh if you gotta take a shot at tequila to remember, I go think for it, it was about the shell. Oh, that was uh oh god that was the cast. It, it wasn't Ted Phillips, it was a, a <laughs> person to remain unnamed. Let's go. Okay, uh oh. But he was in the McCaskey family. Uh the bubble, the Walter Payton Center. Uh -huh. If you've been up there, a uh, nice facility up there they've got. We fucking practiced at Lake Forest College, so you know, listen. Um, they, the long times have changed. Um, we were our practice field was Lake Forest College's stadium, their game field. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's where it, our building was right in front of it, and across the street were some uh, intramural fields that we could go use. In the winter, you know, it'd get muddy and frozen. And there were times we literally would go to South Park, which is a park in Lake Forest, to go practice. We're walking four blocks to us. It's just embarrassing. Yeah. And I ask anybody about South Park and go, you know. Um, so anyway, we're complaining. Guys are slipping, getting hurt. We go up, and so they finally go out. We got to get a, uh, a bubble so we can practice indoors during bad weather. And they so he, Mike McCaskey, he buys a bubble and they put it up about 15 minutes away from house hall. So we got to drive to it. No big deal. But it's a used fucking bubble, right? So we're practicing in the bubble and there's leaks coming through the thing. So we got to move. We <coughs> only use like half the field or three quarters of the field anyway because there's leaks. <coughs> wait, wait, wait. Having a bubble, right? They bought a used they bubble. A used bubble. Used well, we've always heard that they were cheap fucks. Well, how oh, they are. I didn't even know a used bubble was a thing. Yeah, you're in a used condom, but I don't know about a used bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I want to laugh, but at the same time, I want to get so pissed off too. That Actually, that wasn't. It is so ridiculous. McCassie didn't tell me that. That's just the fact, you know. The one in McCassie was about the um, the new Walter Payton Center. That bubble, right? Oh, That's okay. on the property. <laughs> Mike McCaskey again. He had his, uh, from what I understand, he had his own his architect that he'd used out in Martha's Vineyard to build his house or something. Had him come in and design the bubble and then built it. And if you've ever been in there, you've seen all that wood. At the top, you've been in there. Yeah. So you got the you know supports and arches. It's a lot of wood. That thing started leaking. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> and then Brian that? says to me, he goes, "Well, leave it to my brother." We built, spend, you know, I don't know what it was, thirty million on the damn bubble or what, or the whole thing, but and then have to spend ten million dollars to fix it. <laughs> like, wow, That's crazy. Oh God, That's uh, Brian crazy. will and Brian will deny any all oh, this if he hears it, but that's you know it is what it is. <laughs> that's crazy. That is insane. So what I'm hearing is a bunch of it is it is foolishness. <laughs> yes, yes. That is beyond crazy. So, well, they also like, say that the McCaskies. The McCaskies were. They say that the McCaskies are like the, they, they're the only franchise in the NFL that they just strictly bears. They have nothing else going on outside of that, which may be a that, reason why they're so goddamn cheap. No, yeah, well, it's true. And that, and I'm sure that plays into it, but I mean, when you were worth uh, three hundred million, maybe you could say that. Now you're worth six billion. Man. You know, at least you got no excuse I now. Right. I don't care if it's your only business. Yes. You know, so uh, that just by buying that land in uh, Arlington Heights, they doubled their value just overnight just by buying the land. They don't even yeah. have to do anything on it. You know, they still haven't done anything on it. No, but I mean, just by having it. That's what that value your team goes up like that just because you have that. And, uh, you know, I hate to see him leave the city, but it makes total sense in a business sense. 100%. You know, makes so you don't and have and control. It's 15 minutes from my house, Keith. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, Frank, you always say that shit, man. I hope they stay in the city. Ah, 15 I minutes from all the way to fuck out there. I want to ask, I want to ask you this, Keith. I'm a, we're going to go back in our time machine, right? Is there any way that your group would have dealt with the type of BS that's going on now? Because you all were a vocal group as well. 
Oh, yeah. Very vocal, very fiery. I'm talking about coach on down. Yeah, no, pe we, people were held accountable. You know, that goes for players and players and coaches, you know, all that. So that's a problem with this league now is and all this money they make, God bless them. I wish I could make that money. Uh, and also, like, you know, protecting them more, totally understand it, and they should. Mm -hmm. But nobody holds anybody accountable, and nobody practices technique. It's sloppy. It's uh, it's not, you know, it's not focused. It's, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, I just – and I think they're afraid to tell guys, you know, to hold guys accountable because they make so much money, you know, that's just kind of, they don't really call them out on it. I, I don't know. I, I haven't been up there in so long. I just don't understand it. Yeah. That's and it just seems like we've been dealing with that the last last couple regimes. Um, yeah. We believe that they, what, Matt Nagy wasn't holding them uh, accountable. Yeah. Even Bruce is not holding people accountable. Um, for one thing, I don't care who you got back there at, at quarterback. It don't matter if it's the undrafted guy, Justin Fields. That offensive coordinator is doing terrible things right now. And now it's getting to the point that if I'm the head coach, I got to find a way to get rid of your ass to save my ass. And then if I'm the GM, I might have to get rid of the head coach just to save my ass. Yeah. Because that's well, what it seems like it's about to come down to because it's a shit I show. I think right that's going to happen anyway at the end of the year. Uh, that, uh, this is my opinion. I think they're going to get a new head coach. and I, I don't know because I think you got it. Uh, oh, my fucking names. Kevin and uh, who's our who's our Ryan. GM? Ryan. Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Right. Those two guys got to be on the same page and build it their way, um, which, you know, they, they haven't, you know, like I said, the last few uh, regimes have been hand, handed. This is what you got to work with. One didn't even get, you didn't get to pick your own coach, right? Right. So, Actually, two, because I don't <laughs> think, because remember, remember, uh, was it, was that Emory? Yeah. With the whole John Fox thing? <laughs> when John Fox was like, wait a minute, I don't. Mike Glennon, I don't want no damn Mike Glennon. Yeah. <laughs> and what did we pay? We spent 18 and a half million on that guy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we yeah. drafted him Mitch Trubisky. I, yeah. Terrible. I know. Moved but, up. One. Yeah. Went, 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 from, from went from shit to stink. <laughs> Please. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, it's, I, it's, I, But whatever I, happened to proper I, pairings, I, Keith? Because we have Mike Dicker, Ed Hughes. And 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 buddy, I mean, and I'm not saying they all got along, but each of them knew their craft. <laughs> no, no, they didn't get along. No, we have. Uh, <laughs> well, look, hey, I'm here for the shit and the stories. Now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, our offense wasn't like you know pretty easy to decipher. We know what you're gonna do. Ed, you know, he was old school. Yeah, he was a little, he was anyway. a little too old school for me. <laughs> but uh, you know, Mike. When when McMahon is, is is our quarterback, which we needed him to win in our Super Bowl on offense, uh, because he knew he knows offense that well. It, Dick is sending the plays, and eight eight or nine times out of ten, McMahon's changing the plays, and he's changed it to the right play because he, he always heard that. It's nice to hear that he knows the he sees what they're giving you. He knows what you know, you know. So you need that, and uh, you don't have that. So. Um, but Dick came in and changed the culture. You got rid of guys that weren't going to buy into it. Uh, held everybody accountable. We had, and prior to Mike coming, Jim Finks was the GM. Jim Finks was an awesome GM. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Walter and Hampton and Otis and me and McMahon and, uh, you know, there are others that I'm not naming. Those are the number one picks that he, that he came in with, but he, he uh he was a really good GM and you know once uh once Papa George died you know he took off and went down to New Orleans I think and then uh, uh but Jerry Jerry Venisi came in they he did a good job uh, with he and Mike in the drafts up through eighty five we just, just we lost Dick after the Super Bowl to me he started being the coach and focusing oh, on bang, being the coach yeah. checked out a little bit yeah you wanted uh, he was in it for this now and. And uh, Buddy Ryan left after that. Too. Yeah, well, 
And I heard yeah, that, that was the Miami game. game. They got to do it at halftime. Yeah, right. Because right, Buddy Ryan left the next year, and that's when Vince Tobin came in, right? Yeah, and you know what? The defense was like still probably statistically even better than the '85, I think. But it was close. That next year, I mean, that was Barry, you couldn't start that. Barry. Yeah, yeah you know, and we we not, we beat the Giants opening game, and then they fucking went on all the way and won it. So. Uh, that's a that's a sore spot. We should have won more than one, that's for sure. But uh um, you know, with uh um I was gonna say when after the eighty five season in eighty six and Dick is he comes in for the team meeting in the morning and just starts chewing us all out. You guys forgot what it takes to win. You're all fucking concerned with your endorsements and your commercials and all this and I was yeah, too. Well, what? I went home that night, and this is pre-cable, right? Or, or beginning. Right. So, channel two, five, and seven are your—that's what you're watching, right? Yeah. Channel two, five, and seven that night. I switched. He had, he had three different commercials running for three, <laughs> on each channel, and it was three different products. Oh wow! I, that night after he makes the speech, I go home and see that shit. I go out. Oh, but but you guys are commercial now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fuck out of here. He, he would miss practices to go give a speech or film a commercial. And oh, that sucks. Come in and fall asleep in his golf cart because he's so hungover. <laughs> <laughs> but then whoop our ass when we were hungover. <laughs> make us sweat. Make it... <laughs> Which, you know, that's what he should have done. But that, that's okay. So, Keith, can you draw a comparison between Mike Ditka when he wasn't the coach and Dave Wanstead, because actually we had somebody come on here and say that Dave Wanstead was the worst coach they ever had. So Can I'm I just, ask, who was that? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll say that off air. I'll okay. tell you offline who said that. Okay. I, I don't know if you want me to put him out there like that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, I didn't think Wanstead was any good either. I mean, they, I had played one year with them, but it was like they were – they watched everything you did, and it was like, what the fuck? We're not in grade school here. Mm -hmm. Our lunchroom right? – I say lunchroom. It wasn't a lunchroom. It was just a fucking room with a TV. Oh, but we, we'd, in the basement, we'd go down and eat lunch for 20 minutes. They locked the lunchroom so we wouldn't be in there eating lunch watching TV. We had to be watching film eating our lunch, which, you know, we watch film in the morning. You watch plenty of film. And then it just everybody was like the weight coach was reporting all the shit was said in the weight room upstairs. You know, that's just not how they were just they had to control everything. It was just weird. But no, he and he had no fucking clue about what that Green Bay rivalry meant. None. You know, he just oh. thought it was almost like a game, and he had to – our weight coach was – I can't remember his name. This is after Clyde. Um, I think he had worked in Green Bay for a few years, and, and he was an idiot. But So he puts him up to talk to the team about how – what a rivalry is. <laughs> it's like the last person is to be up there talking about what the rivals are about. So, yeah, it was uh, – Wonstadt was not uh, much of anything. I mean, you look at – what did, other than when he was with Dallas, I don't know if maybe in Miami for a year or something, but he hasn't really had a winning record, has he? He, no. where were we, nine and seven with that Curtis Conway era, yeah. era Kramer group? And then I think he had one good year in, in, in Miami, but no. again, he's getting the success based upon really, he's taking the success that Jimmy Johnson had, right? Plus that defense, like. I could have coached that defense and we could have been more than one of Super Bowl. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like right. Norton and them guys, Dion, like it don't take much. <clears throat> it don't take much. No. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it helps. I mean, that's like look at Dallas, that fuck trade they made with her for Herschel, right? The like yeah. who <laughs> the fact that that trade even happened to me is like, what the fuck was Minnesota thinking? But <laughs> they weren't. Dallas used <laughs> utilized those picks and built a damn hell of a team, right? Yeah. So the draft, the yeah. draft. So we had a we had a question from the chat. He was asking if you could hire a coach right now, 
who has the same attributes as Dicka, hmm. who would you pick? <laughs> I don't think you want another Dicka. <laughs> no, you don't want another Dicka. The Bears don't want another Dicka. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want another Dicka, but I, I get what the guy's saying. Um, I, You know, I honestly don't know. I don't know enough about who's out there. to, um, But you do the – I mean, I like this guy in Detroit. Because oh, Dan Campbell? He's Dan holding Campbell. people down him. Right? And, his, and his OC is going to be up for a head coaching job this year. Yeah, that's so, Ben Johnson. That's Ben yeah, Johnson. He's, he's a good. Yeah, you know, Campbell wants to eat kneecaps. Yeah, but you know <laughs> he holds people accountable. But he also, you can be as critical as you want, or, or you know, but you got to then build your guys up. And right. you know, it's it's a it's not one way or the other way. It's got to be both. You know, and I I think that I, he seems to be doing that. Um. So I don't know if anybody out there like that. Uh, you, I think you need a relatively younger guy that's you know up on all this shit, you know, to offense and the defense. But uh, yeah, I I don't know. I don't not so happy with what's going on now. That's for sure. Just curious, what your 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 personal opinion? What do you think about Buddy's kid? What do you think about Rex? Is he still coaching? He isn't. He, no, he, he's, 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 he's living in the booth right now. That, but yeah. That he might. You know what? I don't think the, I don't think the Bears would hire him though, just because he's that was gonna be because he's Buddy's kid. So, but see, that's the wrong thinking. Well, I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's how they are. They don't even bring any of us old vets up there to you know. It's like don't want to. And how they've never hired anybody? You know. Time out. Hold on. Say that again for the people in the back. They don't even let you all interview for positions or even offer you all. Well, I'm sure that they've uh, interviewed some guys, but they've never hired a, one of the ex guys from my team as a coach. Never. Makes. I mean, Fisher went on and had a pretty good career. Ron. Um, well, 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 right, but Ron was here as a coordinator because of Lovey. Oh, that's right. But then he got rid of him. Yeah, yeah. That was the only guy that from our team that I, that was interested in, in coaching. And Yeah, I don't know what it is with their – reluctance to unless they just want to get past that whole did care I, I don't know what it is with them I, the last know. winning error we fucking had. Yeah. that's what i'm saying like that's stupid. well i didn't say it was smart i'm just <laughs> I, I can't explain how they think i mean i can't i've I mean, I haven't figured it out i was there from 81 to 93 and i still can't figure it out so uh, you know. It sort of goes back to what we've been talking about for the longest, or well, at least what Bears fans have been speculating is that the McCaskies want yes, man. It's like they want to control That's everything. Right. They want, but yeah, they, they don't want know them. shit. Like I've always, I've <laughs> always been on here and sit up there and said Virginia has been around the Bears her whole entire life, and. Instead of you know, instead of marrying someone that's probably like you know that has some type of sports knowledge, she goes and marries a fucking accountant, and then they have offspring of fucking nerds that don't know shit. <laughs> and it's like all I hear about is, oh well, the McCaskies want yes men. You know, they want somebody well, to kiss their ass. They don't want people that's gonna ruffle the feather. Someone that's gonna tell them, no, sit the fuck down. I got this. You don't know shit about fucking football. Just well, sit yeah. there and collect the fucking check. That explains Ted Phillips for fucking 30 years or whatever, however long. That's, God, you know, another so, fucking nerd that they brought you know, out. He, you know he, a damn thing about fucking Ted football. Have, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, that's what I'm I'm hopeful about the GM and the, and the president at this point. I need to see the yeah, polls has got to make hit, hit his draft picks, and he's hit some. Um, but I'm I'm curious to see how they work together and build a team yeah. because I, next I, year next year will really be the first time they get that opportunity yeah. you know to make it their own. That's so, what I was gonna say. I feel like this is Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren's gonna show how much control he has in the team this offseason. Well, then let's hope to God they let him do that because yeah, so he is, has to because otherwise he's he's now the new puppet. Yeah, and I don't think he would have taken the job. I agree I, with that. You know, yeah, I don't I don't think he would have so. Nah, and we'll I mean see. that that was gonna bring me into my question about the coachings that JB was going to and everything because we had a couple comments come in that I wanted to bring up as well. But my first question is 
why doesn't the Bears organization hire somebody with good qualities as coaching? Like we had Jim Caldwell that we were talking about that a lot of people would have liked to see this offseason. Well, like, I think the, the-, last, the last one that they actually did do was John Fox, who went to a Super Bowl. Two. But they gave they two Super Bowls two different and teams. they gave him shit. They gave him nothing yeah, to yeah. work with. Didn't let him pick. And then they stuck him with the, you know, the GM, the new GM. So, yeah, you know, uh, oh fuck, I had it and I lost it. Um, what was I gonna say? What were we talking about now? Shit, coaching. As the that, coaches, the coaches. It, it was good about stuff John that Fox. I hit before the show. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm still. Kind of we, we'll come back to it. You'll get it. <laughs> It's only nine o'clock. Oh shit! I can't remember what I was gonna say. Anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, other other than that, like talking about like the, the tequila would have like, helped that. Why they don't <laughs> hire people like that? And there is how you were talking about a former bear who is going to leave college this year. I don't know. Hey, hey, no, don't, 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 don't. He's leaving. Ahead. He's don't leaving. All right, he is so but, done. Hey, hey Keith, did, Keith, did you remember? I did. Uh, remember. Uh, Oh fuck his last name. Dave, linebacker coach for us, and then went to Arizona. Uh, Dave, this is he was going to be a coach, right? They were going to hire him. They announced that they had hired him. Yeah, and uh, they hadn't even worked the deal out yet. So he said, "Fuck you." I mean, you're going to say you hired me without actually agreeing to a contract? Dave McGinnis. That was was, was Dave McGinnis. McGinnis. Oh, Dave McGinnis. No, I do remember Dave McGinnis. He was the coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, because Mike McCaskey put out that we were hiring him. We've hired him, and he he saw that in the paper, and he said, "Fuck you! I know you didn't hire me yet because we had to sign a deal." So he he bolted off. But there's another, you know, another example of. But there we go again, Keith, with the ineptitude. Like this franchise, charter franchise, you see more Bears fans around the world than you do Absolutely. any other team. Why are we so dumb when it comes to? You know what? I'm not even going to ask you that question because you don't know how they think. They're just idiots. But, well, I mean, uh, stop it. Out. You got stop it. You got, idiots. You got, you got, he, they've got to, and that's why I'm I'm having hopes with with Kevin and Ryan, is that let the guys, that, you hired them for a reason. I mean, look how they were hiring before that. They'd get uh, consultants <clears throat> to yeah. fucking hire people. I mean, yeah. if you got to yeah, do that. Yeah, old motherfuckers. Yeah, that's, that's guys crazy. from yeah, exactly. So that's a bad sign in and of itself. You got to get a consultant to hire because you don't know anything about football. So. First of all, first of all, you score more. I don't, I don't. I don't want to hear shit about Bill Polian again. <laughs> and I don't want to hear nothing about ninety-four year old Ernie. Of course, I don't want to hear none of that. And those are the guys on top. Exactly. It's like uh, you know, maybe at a time, you know, back in the day. Sure. Oh, 30 years ago? Right. Maybe. Like not now. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. Like, come so. on. And that's why I said that the ineptitude just goes too far. Now I'm gonna talk about one of your teammates. And if 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 we don't if we get into it, it's okay. I will buy you your tequila of your choice. But I do not want Jim Harbaugh putting his fingers on this team. At all. That's the name where I was going with well, that he's was, going to leave Michigan. Yeah, and this that was is obvious is who you were referring to, but I, I agree with you. I don't know that they'd hire him, but I don't think they would. Really. You played with him. You know him. You know that's not Yeah, but right. I'm saying they, from what Everything I'm telling they you, try has not yeah, they may not hire him just because he, he has out. history with the Bears. That's what I'm saying. They're not, mm-hmm. some reason they have a weird thing about that. But I, look, he's had a lot of success, but I wouldn't want to see him come here either. Mm-hmm. But that's just my. But point. see, what, what are we talking about yeah. now? I like success, but success in short stints, I like sustained success. Yeah. And when you yeah. hear from upper management and players that not only does the message get stale very quick, but you're so high on your horse that you're telling GMs and presidents how to do their job. Hey, yeah. man, hold on. Yeah, Jim Jim has a high opinion of himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's no question about that. And I'm and, not saying the guy can't coach, but I don't want to – I don't but you're right. It does in. get old. It, and it's in three, four years, it's kind of the he's kind of old school, I guess. But that does get old. You can't, you know. And 
And now, what, they're under investigation now, right? For oh, yeah. oh, something and else. I, and I think he's done. Like I, Falcon I can tell you a little bit more about that. I'm going to I'm I'm throw that to Falcon. Falcon can tell you a little something about that. He's the resident Michigan fan. Okay. Yeah. Nobody right. likes Michigan other than him. I should ask you. Right, well, well, I should well, ask Peter Becker because he played at Michigan. He, he knows all that stuff. Oh, yeah, you're you're so sure right. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. And, and, uh, uh, he, was he, another, he was another part of our offensive line. You know, before he got hurt, then, then Tom came in. But Kurt was uh, – you know, a valuable player there as well. So I throw that in because, you know, he doesn't get much. There's, there's a little disclaimer out there. Uh, you know, my man JB there, he's a Michigan State guy. So, of course, he don't fucking want no Wolverine running this shit any goddamn way. So, you know, little brother don't want big brother to run it anyway. So it's okay and fine. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Jim Harbaugh is going anywhere. I think he's going to get a contract extension. I think all that shit that they're talking about is blowing smoke up people's asses. They can't find shit. NCAA been down there. They still ain't found shit. They can kiss my ass. We can talk about some more bears. This is this is three well, years. And again, three trust years me, I, 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 the NCAA is fucking they don't want the biggest hypocrites there are. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I went to yeah, USC. Oh, oh my god. And they nailed us. They nailed us. And then some other guys, they let, you know, and that was because of, we're going to make an example, uh, you know, so. Yeah, Wait, was that, was that after the Munoz thing? What's that? You were, you were with Anthony Munoz after that? Yeah, Anthony and, uh, 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 shit, we had a, uh, Anthony Munoz, Ronnie Lott. Like, I remember you all had something and then. In the late seventies, early eighties, they were saying something about some recruiting stuff with y'all too. Oh, uh, it you know was what I'm talking about. Yeah. Was it recruiting? Was it recruiting? Or was, yeah, it was. It was. It was uh, getting paid for tickets. That some alumni, like, which everybody yeah. fucking does, you know. So anyway, yeah, that's what that was. So yeah, that my last year actually. I couldn't. Like we you say, were hypocrites. Yeah. Well, and then they, you know they're. All this now that they got the NIL though, but before you can, you know, they own your your likeness. They could do whatever the hell they wanted with it, you know. And they're denying these guys. No, they're student athletes. They can't bullshit. They're bringing in more money to your university than anybody. This program is so. Yeah. You know, the and I, this NIL NIL thing is a great thing, but it needs to be. There needs to be some. I think some adjustments to it. Uh, you know, I don't know what those are, but I think there needs to be some a little bit of oversight. Not, I don't know if the NCA is going to be that good at that, but you know. Well, you well, know they put no the shit anyway. They let them boys down south. They they let the boys down south do whatever the fuck it is that they want to do, and and nothing is being said about it. I yeah. mean, goddamn, you think Alabama, Georgia, all these different programs, Florida's the Florida states. You think all these guys. Guys weren't buying people. Shit, they've been that was like one of the worst kept secrets in the world was that they were buying players, yeah, giving their families different shit. But it's like, oh, now some of these up north teams do it. Oh, yeah, we're gonna get your ass, we're gonna yeah, get your ass, right? Yeah, it brings more attention than, yeah, I mean, go all the way SEC, back. I mean, you and Shaq, yeah, anyway. What else? <laughs> what else, guys? So, Keith, <laughs> let, me, let me ask yeah. you this if you were to give advice to the offensive line that the Bears have currently, you give advice. What would you tell them? <laughs> they got to get tougher. They, Man up. They've got to get their techniques. They got to, you know, they got to work on their techniques. They got to communicate. I see things on the line that should be happening in terms of stunts and stuff where the guys aren't on the same page. Uh, I mean, that's just, that can't happen. It just can't happen. That's why you're there, you know? So, you know, your quarterback can't, regardless of who it is, he can't be sitting back there scared out of his fucking mind because he's going to get nailed. And that's pretty much what's happening for both, you know, both the guys that have played. So, um, and then an offensive coordinator, as Tom Miles said, is, Especially when Justin's in there, he cut, they, they cut half the field off for that guy. I said that. You know? It's One, like, two, run. <laughs> yeah. It's screen here, screen there, roll him here. It's like, let the guy have the field and, you know, utilize his abilities. Now, whether whether he's the answer in the long run, I don't know. But he, he got to have a supporting cast to make the decision. So, I don't know. 
It's a it's an ugly s- scenario, boys. If if they <laughs> called right now, would you take the offensive lines coach job? Because I mean, fuck no. Well, you said it all right there. Say that again. Fuck no. <laughs> Why I worked, not? I worked hey, for him, to you, my brother. Too. I worked for him once before. I'm not gonna work with him again. So, <laughs> plus they wouldn't call me anyway. But that's okay. It, uh, well, if we got the right regime in here, I think, and this is just me thinking, not just nostalgically, but logically, because too many times we deal with emotions, and that's not that. That obviously, that emotions and nepotism doesn't always equate to success. No. No. I'm looking at it like why the only time that we were considered great, why wouldn't you want that group of talent around anything that you do from now until the future? Why wouldn't you? Even, even just bring us bring people up there to talk and hey, come and talk to the guys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. Put a bug in their ear, some inspirational conversations, some stories. Trust me. Uh we some of uh, us ex players have in conversations of talking about, they go, you know, why, you know, they brought in, you know, Munoz down in for a training camp. And I mean, Anthony's probably one of the greatest left tackles ever played. For sure. But he's not a Chicago Bear, right? They brought in some other guys from other teams that training camp. It's like, why wouldn't you bring people that, you know, but. I did hear this year, though, they did bring a decent amount of like the early 2000s to the mid 2000s type players in, but never yeah. beyond that. Never the extremely successful Super Bowl winning freaking team. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm focused hey, on. Frank, you know, uh, that only works for defense. Yeah. And you saw how our, you know, when, when uh, Olin was there and Big Cat, I mean, that was where the success came again. Of course, right. the, defense, the defense was real good too. Obviously, you got Lance and Erlocker and uh, Peanut, and you know those guys are good. So, um, but that's where that you see the how that works, you know. So, and you had consistency, and I think Lovey was, I think Lovey was a good coach, um, and I, you know the guys like to play for him, and they wanted to do well for him, and that's you need that too. You know, you guys got to buy into the fucking system, right? I right. think it's just. Yeah, Keith, do you think it may be for the simple fact that you, like you, you guys you had a lot of players that had uh, personalities, you know what I'm saying, unique personalities. Do you think that may be some of the reasons? You know, because it seems like to me from previous players that uh, play with the Bears, it seems like the owners are more they, the cheap asses. They want yes men around them. They want to take credit for every damn thing. They don't know shit. Maybe you guys know where all the bones are buried, so maybe that's the reason why they don't want you. Yeah, guys. well, it be and you know, guys like me t- t- tell the story, so they don't want to hear that either. <laughs> you know, but it, here's the other thing: things. Right. Yeah, a lot of characters for sure. Which again, you'll never see that again, just because they won't let that shit happen, or yeah, you because know, guys are moving teams. And then the, after every home game, you know, three quarters of the team was down under the parking garage hanging out doing tailgates with their families and mm-hmm. defense and offense, you know, just a big party underneath, you know, specifically when we were winning. <laughs> but they don't do that anymore. After games, they don't hang out. They get in their car and they leave, you know. And, uh, it's a different thing now, I, but that brings your camaraderie. That brings, you know, it gets you close to each other. You play for each other. You you know, that's, a, I think, a major part of, of you know, building a team like that. But, uh, you know, oh, I got another story about this old stadium. It has nothing to do with anything we just talked about. But um, we here for it. The tunnel, right? We, you know, again, old Soldier Field, but the tunnel where we come in out of my first years, we, you know, we were real bad. So you had to leave your helmet on going in because uh, Danny Neal, who was a veteran center, he says, yeah, don't take your helmet off. And then our own fans are throwing cups of beer at our heads and shit ass, you know, fucking boo, you know, all that. Hey, you know, we were bad. So, you know, they have a right to do that. Not throw shit at my head, but they have a right to do that. So then they kept doing that. So they finally put up a, a canvas tarp to cover the tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. So the thing, they throw shit and bounce off. They lit that motherfucker on fire so they could then throw stuff at our head. <laughs> Whoa! Damn. The thing was on fire. Oh, shit. 
hey. then they ended up putting us like a metal top, and then you would just hear shit bounce. So that right, right, worked. Right. <laughs> then when we started winning, then they took it down, and then it was fine. But that shit happened. Let me hey, tell yes. you. We are definitely a passionate damn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's what you know, it's a great Chicago's just a great, the great fans, great football town, a great city in and of itself. Um, you know, it's a wonderful place to play football. So and and they and they we all deserve a winning team. I, I oh, gotta shit. ask you these next two questions. Please indulge me. One of them you can answer next. That's about the Super Bowl shuffle. But the question that I have to ask you, how much better did your offense and defensive lines actually going against each other make both of you all better? Because we don't see too much of that no more, right? No, you don't. Which no. it, that goes back to us saying nobody can tackle, nobody's blunt, because you're not doing that. That's what, you know, it, it makes a game that much easier. You know, again, you're going against our defensive line, our offensive line. We battled every day, you know. This wasn't like we were. But they didn't get all the wins. Didn't didn't Hampton and them guys didn't get all the wins against you all? That's not true. No, they didn't get all the wins against us. Fuck. And then they made us better, but we made them better too. And they they don't they don't want to say that, but it's true. So um, no, you know what? Behind you, that's how you know. Because they had their posters and their promotion, and you had yours. Yeah, that's the first offensive line poster I think this ever was. You know, I'm, I don't know. That was a lot of fun too, by the way. All that stuff. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, we would go at it in practice. You know, Wednesday and Thursdays is full go. Uh, the line right. is full go. That's right. Like it. it just is what it is. You know, um, Wednesdays we wear you know helmets and pads and shorts, but the, you know it start off. Not, you know, kind of nice, but then it would just turn into, a, you know, everybody's going at each other. But um, that's how you get better, and that's how you play well. And, yeah, that does not happen because they're so afraid that guys are going to get hurt and you're paying them so much money. And But, you know, you don't practice in training camp. The fir- At least the first third of the season is so sloppy from everybody because well, nobody's doing anything, you know? I know that's got a lot to do with the CTE and all that stuff. But- yeah, and that's good, but – but you're, in my opinion, because everybody on this panel has played sports to a certain level, how can I practice how to play in the game if my practice don't happen till the game? I would think exactly more people right. and more people get hurt nowadays. And now more people are getting hurt because we're not we're not conditioned. Yeah. You're gonna get hurt more by not practicing like that. I agree. Exactly. You guys just this is exactly right. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. Yeah, I know. I think they wear pads once a week. <laughs> the, that? I think that's, that's in the collective bargaining the agreement. It's in the collective bargaining agreement. They, they, I just want to slap the shit oh, out. Oh, we of need you. to burn that shit. Yeah, well, trust <laughs> me, us old guys want to burn it too. They don't do shit for us. So Keith, <laughs> oh, right now that's the same. Real talk, that's the same. Yeah. Let, let me jump in here, Keith. Your team was so ferocious when you all did practice. Were there a lot of fights? There were quite a few fights. Yeah, yeah. Mix Ooh, ups. Who's kicking everybody's ass? Well, let's go back and forth. Um, I kicked some ass. Jimbo put McMichael down one to get on the ground one time. <laughs> oh, uh, and uh, you know, Hampton would get then Hampton, if you <laughs> and God bless him, damn was all he was a great player, but he he would look at his shoe like he his, his foot slipped if you like beat his ass or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Every That's time you look down like a shoe, like it's like we just go okay, <laughs> okay. Um, you know, Mike Cartenstein, I got into it early in my career. You know, Mike was a tough son of a bitch. Um, he was bigger than you, though, was he? No, he was a small guy, but he was strong as hell. I was like, keep six six two eighty plus, right? Six, six seven and six eight. I played at two eighty five. Two eighty five, yeah. Like which you I mean, I'm bigger, real close to that now. <laughs> I was say you were one of the bigger bigger uh, linemen. Uh, yeah, height wise for sure. I'm saying yeah. height wise, yeah. Which is the not, biggest. which is not to your advantage, by the way. So, uh, you know, anyway, although they're all pretty big now, but they don't. It's like zone this, zone that. You know, it's yeah. Where's this? Like, yeah, and then alligator again, arms. They get alligator arms. You, you, that and nobody's getting inside. You're gonna hold, and it holding goes on on both sides of every fucking play. So. 
you got to get your hands inside right where those shoulder pads and that pit is. That and that's where you get it. They don't see it, and you can control them. And you, that's where you get your punch, too. That's where you want to hit them. You hit them here, you don't do shit, you know, and that happens way too much. So, you know. Well, that goes back to the fundamentals that we talked about should be from the coaches. Exactly. Exactly. That's You're right. If you're not teaching punch, you're not teaching line play. Yeah. I don't care about the schematics and zone and get out and having somebody that runs a five getting out over here doing I don't care about that. Can you put a man on his behind? Yeah. And if you watch the line play, and it doesn't, it's not just our team. It happens all over for most of the point. These linemen put their hands, go right to the outside. And it's like, I don't understand that at all. Why that's not a major, you know, focus. But, uh, you know, and that's what, uh, right, I, you know, if he gets that down, that kid's going to, he's a he's a player. And he's I like got him a he's nasty. He mean. Yeah. And I and if Tevin can stay healthy, he's got he's the same nasty and mean, too. Yeah. he's he, And I, that's why I like them together. I mean, a, that's a bad combo right there. But, um, you know, healthy, who knows? I don't know. But, uh and he has excellent footwork. footwork. Yeah, he's got great feet. I, people he goes up against says that too. It's like I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, no, I think it was actually Chase Young. I don't think it was the um sweet that we got. But he says I beat him at least four or five times off of the ball. But his footwork gets him right back into position. Yeah, he's a ball. real good athlete. He's really got good balance and, and quickness on his feet. Um, <laughs> and uh, and he's got a motor. You know, he's he's got and he's nasty. Um. And that I think Kevin's the same way, but again, you gotta stay healthy. Um, so that's where I'm at, fellas. Yep, I hear you. So before we uh before we go any further, Keith, would do you want to stay on here and check out these Halloween costumes we got on here? And then we're gonna talk about the funniest costume that I saw. Oh, you got like a, a pictures of different costumes? Yeah, yeah. Where's yours? <laughs> I mean, I'm being Keith Van Horn. I'm playing <laughs> Keith Van Horn. a scary ass costume. When I'm, he was not, yeah. I'm playing an old, an old out of shape Keith Van Horn. That, that's perfectly I'm, fine. I think Keith, I'm nailing it. <laughs> that's perfectely fine because T Nick is playing Lovey Smith. He just won't admit it. Oh no, man! Come on, hey, a true man. monster of the midway, bro. Well, you know what? Let me get some water and I'll come back. Okay, that okay. Good? That's good. I, I, if I had the tequila, the bottle be right here, but I don't have it. So, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. so we had a, uh, another question in the chat. That we, <laughs> we had another question in the chat that we should ask him. his favorite game aside from the Super Bowl. I. Ooh. Do you think it would be the fall bowl? No, oh, man. I don't no. know if I'd be. I would be enjoyable to play in that fucking game. That game seemed like it was a lot of fun. Not for the offense. Not for the offense. You can't oh, see. Yeah, not for the offense. I would well, be honest with you. Let's ask him about man, it. Man, that sounds like a hit game. No, look, look, look. I'm gonna be a thousand percent honest with you guys. If it was me picking, I honestly would say it would be the NFC Championship game because remember the Rams was supposed to Eric Dickens was supposed to run all over the Bears. They were supposed yeah. to beat us, and we did we blank them or they only gave up like three points or something? No, we beat them like twenty something to nothing, didn't we? Somebody looked that up. If I'm not, it was a shutout. I do remember. I thought that. it was a shutout, but I can't remember. Like Eric Dickerson did not get off. They did not have a hundred yards rushing or whatever. Chat, hit us up that uh hit hit that up with us. What was the score of that game? I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm if memory serve, I'm pretty sure it was some type of shutout. Curtis Clay can tell me. I don't know if Curtis Clay is watching, but that Rams team, they were talking about how Eric Dickerson was better than Walter. Eric Dickerson was gonna run all over us, and they were gonna show us a true championship. Um, and if you remember. We as fans, actually, you probably don't. T, you remember. Chris, you might. We were hoping for that rematch for the one Bears loss. We wanted Miami, but the Patriots beat Miami. Remember that take that Patriots team with uh, Steve Grogan? They beat Miami in the AFC Championship. The Patriots team was a good team, and we embarrassed the shit out of them. We, well, we thought it would be the Bears versus – well, you know, if you go look at that old um, – that old um, Monday Night Football game with the Dolphins – 
that was just a wonky game. And then, like, that play where, like, we should have had the interception and it bounced up to, like, Mark Duper, and then he just ran in, like, with nobody trailing. Like, it was just a lot of crazy stuff going on. And that was a Monday Night Football game. Dan Marino, you know, I don't know. Like, I just remember some cra- – thank you, crazy. I, I thought it was 20-something to nothing, right, I, I, if memory served. First and that was the Rams. That was Eric Dickerson. I, I, re- I remember that. And then we just humiliated the Patriots. I don't even remember this kind of shit. So yeah, we're good. Yeah, I, was, and, uh, I was watching it with my, my mom. That 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 damn line. Line. You said what? Yeah, they met on that line and it wasn't pretty. I said I Eric Dickerson and uh, Mike Singletary met in that line and it wasn't pretty. That was that 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 st- that that standoff. My internet freezing. <gasps> Because that was a if, – if, if anybody wants to watch, like, yep. a masterful defensive game, go watch that game. Hold on. Don't – nobody say that because Keith is back. Keith. We had a couple questions that in, in that chat that we wanted to bring up to you. Okay. I had to piss too, fellas. So, here we go. <laughs> hey, brother, come on now. <laughs> go ahead, JB. You were the one. JB, you want to ask a question? Go for it. Oh, okay, so the question was no. Terrence had asked one of the one of our the uh, first question I was gonna ask was from the chat. Was, right from the chat. Someone was asking, "What was your favorite game to play aside from the Super Bowl?" Oh, uh, Dallas, Dallas, forty-four nothing. Oh, we <laughs> oh, oh, I remember yeah. that. Whitewash yeah. their ass. I remember. Yeah. I yeah. Was yeah. Dallas was game. is the America's team, right? Right, so we went and we went and showed them who America's fucking team was. That's what we did. I remember so, that. That's a lot of fun. They still are America. Hey, was, hey Keith, was that Randy White? Yeah. No, wait. Was he still playing? I thought he was towards the tail end, 85, 86, right? Yeah, I don't know if he was still playing. He might have been, but I got into a Randy. He ripped my helmet off. That motherfucker was on so much speed. <laughs> it's like. No, Randy White was a problem on defense. Yeah, oh yeah, he was a good player. <laughs> uh, there's a picture of him. He's holding my helmet and I'm taking a swing. I missed him, but I'm in full extension with, without my helmet. Um, but that was the Dallas game. Um fog bowl. Oh, oh, you know. said fog bowl. oh man, we were we were actually discussing that when you left. We, everybody was sitting there like Man, as an offensive player, I don't think he could have liked the fog bowl. Like oh God, know. man, it was it was so eerie. It was it would have it should have been on Halloween, right? I mean, it was so <laughs> eerie. It literally, I don't remember what the temperature was, but it, you're on the field, and it came off the lake over the south rim of the stadium, mm-hmm. and it was like the movie The Fog. I swear to God, just, it came in, and it just came in and covered the field. <laughs> And we were still playing. I mean, I could hear whistles blowing, and oh, oh. I, I couldn't see what was happening. Was, was, that, was that a here. Steve Fuller game, or was that a Mac game? Oh, fuck, who was that? I think that was a Mac game. I think it was, too. Um, And that was that was the playoff. Was that the playoff game? Yeah, but the Eagles. Yes, the Eagles, yeah. Yeah, yeah so then it was Buddy. Game. It was Buddy. I was playing against Reggie White. Um, oh, right. That was 86, right? Yeah, was it 86? 86, 87 season, yeah. right? But it was literally, you know, you couldn't – you'd hear stuff. Cause, right, because Buddy you was could, coaching, so that had to be the next year. Yeah, you couldn't see Randall it. Randall Cunningham. Yeah. yeah, and they would – uh, they still use that as an okay. excuse. Nah, that was uh, 88. Was it? Easy it was an 88. Five times that. Yep. Yeah, and, and it, it, Philly still uses that as their excuse when they didn't win. Because the fog came in. The fog, we had to play in the fog, too. What, so, anyway, oh. that, was a, that was a good one. Hey, um, Keith, this is the one that a couple of us talked about. All week long, going into the NFC Championship game, you all heard in the papers what Eric Dickerson was going to do <laughs> and what their defense was going to do to us. Run the ball down their throat. And yeah. and. and, and what did Eric have? He got his ass handed to him. They didn't even have 100 yards, if I'm not mistaken. It's like one of those games. Because you all, uh, Bullets put it up. I think you all gave up 10 points combined the whole, like, playoff series or something. Yeah. Like that, like. Well, and the good thing about that, too, is their head coach, John Robinson, was my college coach. 
Oh, for uh, real? And their offensive line coach was my line coach from college. So, and, and plus, my uh, one of my best friends from like when we were two years old, still talk to him this day. He actually works for the Steelers. Mm -hmm. Um, he was their strength conditioning coach that on that year. So I had that connection. So that was fun. Hey, that's nice. My end, you know, for that. Um, and shout out to Garrett, by the way, my buddy. He's fighting cancer right now. So. Hey, uh, please shout out. Yeah, please yeah, do. So, uh, yeah, I lost my my two best friends from childhood. One just died, and this guy's fighting for it. So we'll hopefully he, he sticks around. Um, yeah, those are you know off the top of my head. Um, you know, there's there's got there's more. I'm just off the top. We'd always like going to Tampa. <laughs> well, yeah, and half you know a third of the stadium would be Chicago people. And that was, that was creamsicle. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they had that on the other day or a game. I saw, recently. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It I is. said, oh, the old uniform. It was a throwback. I yeah. Liked it. And uh, we always had fun in Tampa. Let me just leave it at that. So. <laughs> I bet I can guess. I bet I can leave guess. it at that. Pause moment. We'll leave it at that. Hey, mind your business. Mind your business. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeffy, did you have a few? A couple questions you want to ask before we move on. Yeah, I, I just want like a little silly stuff because, huh? in my opinion, like I said, when you're ready or yeah. we can go to the segment, <clears throat> excuse me, I want just just to know you all's take from the Super Bowl stuff because the linemen were kind of like in the in the back uh, shadow. I think it was a uh, was it Keith Ortego that was ringing on the bell type stuff. Like a lot of you all that we wanted to hear speak, y'all didn't sing or whatever. That's cool, but. I was saying in that Super Bowl, I thought you all wanted a little payback against Miami because remember the AFC Championship game was the Dolphins versus the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. Well, we that Monday it. night with some with some bull. That was we some bull. We love that. Yeah. Well, Monday night was some bull, and then they filmed the damn thing the next day. The next day, shuttle, 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 shuffle, shuffle. Um, yeah. Well, that and I, you know, defense won't. They don't like talking about that either. But, buddy. Jimbo Covert roomed with Marino at Pitt for, you know, three years or something. I don't know. Um, and Jimbo, when I know, he even said this to Buddy. He said, Buddy, you can't, you can't play the same defense. You can't have linebackers covering these, these receivers. He goes, because he gets rid of the ball so fast. He goes, you can't do that. And that's exactly what they did. They just, you know, because you know, I don't think anybody's – you come on, there's probably a few guys that come close about Marino's release time. I mean, that guy would just fucking get rid of it. And uh, they just wouldn't change. And that's why at halftime, Buddy and Dick got into it because Dick was saying, you can't, you know, he was pissed that Buddy wouldn't change. And Buddy wouldn't change. But uh, so. Well, yeah. I remember when the floodgate, well, not let me not call it floodgates, but I remember the play where I forgot the linebacker because I, I was like, Literally like seven, but I have like a photograph in, um, in Miami because somebody almost intercepted the ball. Then it caromed over to Mark Duper, and he like, yeah. I think that was wasn't it Fensic? Was that Gary? We go off Fensic's hands. I I, I, I know, the, know play. the play. I'm speaking of. I do know the play. You're right. And then I think we did we fumble a punt or they returned a punt something that didn't help anything either. So, but that was a huge play, right? Because yeah, I like, kind of, like open the floodgates because we were still close then. Then it just yeah. all fell. To, to yeah, that's true. That's true. And then Dicka got pissed at us at the end of the game. The game was sure. done, but Walter didn't have 100 yards yet. No, so wait that, a Why he going to get well, That's on us, too, the line. We didn't even have to have 100 yards yet. So McMahon just said, fuck, because Dick has thrown. He wants us to throw the ball. You know, it's, you know we were going to win the King comeback anyway. But so Jim says, no. Nah, we're gonna get Walter's hundred yards, so that's what we did. Yeah, you know? but so, remember so. that what? So, in fairness, because I don't like to make excuses, <laughs> but that wasn't that wasn't Jim McMahon. That was a Steve Fuller game. Well, I could have swore Jim was in the huddle at the end. Then what? Oh, maybe was it at the end? Yeah, because um, I know I remember saying, "Yeah, fuck that. We're gonna get Walter's hundred yards." Because I, I know I remember that. Very I remember clearly. watching it on Monday night with my mom, and I'm just like. What are we watching here? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's a sad, sad asterisk in our, our 
but you're right. We would have loved to have been able to play Miami because um, we, we they wouldn't have beat us the second time. I can guarantee you that. Well, no, uh, look look how they lost to the Patriots. There's no yeah. way. There's and, you no know, it gets, way. and I get why these guys do it, but every time they nobody goes undefeated, those old fuckers start smoking cigars, and having their drinks about how you know. And I I get why they do it. They should do it, but God, it rubs me the wrong way. I'll 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 give them this because they're pioneers, but that 14 game season versus that 16, now versus that 17, that's three different animals. Yeah, it is. That is. Man, I you know, 16, now, 16 you know, was the that's where I like it. Give me 16. Yeah. 17. Look, they'll be 18 soon, I'm I'm sure, at some point, right? You know, because they're do they what we have two preseasons now or three? We have three, but yeah, it'll, go, it'll, it'll go to two. two. It'll but, go to two, and there'll be an extra game. But yeah. where's your evaluation then? What we just no, about? that goes back to yeah, exactly training camp, preseason. Nobody's playing. Nobody, you know, it's like and stop charging us regular <laughs> game prices for preseason football. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you know, you're not getting you're not getting the uh, the product. You should, you're not getting it with full price either. So, but you know. Oh, Bullets just said it. Yeah, thank you. I thought it was Steve Fuller, right? Because Steve Fuller was like number four or something. Like, I thought it was Fuller. It wasn't Jimmy Matt. It was it, it, both of them, but Fuller had more snaps. That I mean, means Jimmy like, wasn't healthy. Yeah, I, I just think he went in. I, for some reason, remember him being in at the end. Because this is at the end of the game. Yeah. So. I remember the Minnesota game. I could be wrong. And told Mike Dicker, hey, man, screw <laughs> you. I'm going to do And he threw three straight touchdowns. I remember yeah. And so, you saw Walter pick up that blitz like a motherfucker. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Jimmy Mack. You know, you don't have to like A lot of guys don't like him. I don't say guys on our team, although there were some guys on our team. But, Wait, they didn't like him? Wait, he came from BYU where he was throwing the ball all over the yard. What are we talking about, Keith? Well, it's, 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 you know, you, you know, McMahon, is his, his attitude and his way he played and all that. I don't give a guys didn't like he that. plays winning football. Not on offense. I'm talking to a few guys on defense. Oh, like okay. That. So you open the door, Keith. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask who? Oh, no. No names. <laughs> no names. No names. <laughs> no names, no numbers. You no didn't give me a name, name, Terrence. All right. I'll give you a name. You give uh, me a no. <laughs> Oh, Prick. Wait, pro, pro. Prick, are we really doing this right now? Fellas? No, we're not doing this. Okay. I know we're not. We're not. Let's going to uh, wait, now. Let me, what do we got going with these costumes? Okay, so let's go yes. ahead and get into these costumes, man. So, I had uh some people send us some Halloween costumes, and JB, where's yours at? Oh, this is where I it's am at. a Bears fanatic. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're, you're, an alcohol, you're an alcoholic, an alcoholic <laughs> Bears fan. That's a lie. <laughs> okay, all right. You know all right. Alcoholics are quitters. They go to AA yeah, meetings. Good point. A drunk Bears fan, then. There you go. Let's a drunk, right. depressed Bear fan. Depressed. Right. Oh, Lord. I, so need to I had some of the, uh, some of our, some wait, of the viewers. I got to come back with, I, I got to know Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones years ago. And a good hey, yeah. the guy that I met that introduced me to him was another friend who's no longer with us, but. He got pulled over for drunk driving, this guy, and had to lost his license and stuff. And he goes to Keith, he goes, yeah, man, it's killing me. I can't drive. He goes, he goes to tell me I have a drinking problem. He goes, you don't have a drinking problem because you have a driving problem. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, just to go to the alcoholic and all that shit. I like that. All right. I like that. Let's see these things. All right. So the first one, well, we, so we had. We had a few people that actually watched the podcast. They submitted their uh, pictures, their Halloween pictures, and we'll start with this one. <laughs> oh wow! Rabbit, uh, Jessica Rabbit. That is Jessica Rabbit, and that is Misty McMichael. That is Misty. Look at Misty. It's there. Okay, Misty. Salute to you. Very nice. <laughs> the red. I like how. She's got the one I cover too with the red hair. Right. Like that takes me like, back to like, what is that, like 88, 87? Yeah. 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 And she <laughs> got the yeah. leg out. She the got legs looking good, isn't it? Good on Misty. Yeah. I, that, yeah. Okay, Misty. All right. We see you. We yeah. see you, girl. <laughs> so the next one, 
is our buddy Jenny with an I is her name. And she also watches the podcast. And she is anybody guess? Freddy Krueger. Sexy Freddy Krueger's wife. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good on yeah. Freddy. Jenny I can dig it. I can, I can dig Jenny it. Krueger. Yeah, Jenny Krueger. Yeah, Freddy. Freddy is lucky, huh? <laughs> but his long hand ass. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's I thought that when I first saw it. You know that that was something to do with Freddy. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. So let's move on to <laughs> Emilio Bucks. You know what? That almost looks like fucking a wax figure. <laughs> he it does. Really does. He it does. does. It look real. It really does. Yeah, he went good. traditional though. He went Bella Lugosi. Yeah, that's yeah, back in the day, no. Dracula. He was. Uh, I like yeah, it. He went traditional. I like it. I like well, it. Well, it's traditional and Blackula mixed in together. So. There yeah. you go. The eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> he went in, man. That makeup is real good. Yeah. He looked in a cape. It's all good. Yeah. Is, is he got a? No, I was going to say it, it's double-breasted, but it's not. Okay. No, it's no, not, not, for the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, hey, not in 2023, Keith. No, no. And, yeah, not, and not original Dracula, old school Dracula. So the next one is also from yeah. the Chicago Clubhouse Network. That is Kristen Pertit. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I see a big ass bloody knife, but I'm you not. know what that is? That's 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 what is uh the rainbow bright? No man, Chucky. But, but I, I was just gonna say that it looks like Chucky because she's got the red hair too. Oh, oh, yeah. That's Charlene and the stripes. Yeah, that's Charlene. That's Charlene. Who the hell is Charlene? Chucky's sister. Yeah, that was from the originals. <laughs> and I don't know Chucky's family, man. <laughs> yeah, that was from the originals. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Chucky, Chucky. Didn't Chucky have a wife too or something? Yeah, yeah. Chucky. Yeah. Jennifer wife. Tilly. Oh, oh yeah, oh. Man, that was a good one. Hold on, yeah. now, wait a minute. We, we ain't gonna say nothing bad about no damn Jennifer Tilly on this. No, show. no, no. Oh, I got nothing bad to say about okay. Jennifer Tilly. She's a trip, man. She's a Jennifer trip. Jennifer Tilly has some big ass. <laughs> <Them Hey>. <laughs> Just go right into that shit. <laughs> Oop, <Ooh, my fault. laughs> Yeah, that's how people speak in Cali. So. <laughs> Let's go on to the next costume. This is this is our guy. Um, he's he's he is rarely rarely in the chat. I think he's a lurker. A lurker. Uh, his name is Mac Bundy. Ooh. Al Bundy's kid. Al Bundy's kid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess so. Four touchdowns, one game. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't necessarily look. Tell my boy Bundy. Well, he's <laughs> is he. I don't he's, know. He's I got the real mask on his jacket or his hood. Thing. Right. In the yeah, 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 face. Yeah, so I'm a little confused, but yeah. All he right. has the new school mask on his face. <laughs> I applaud the effort for the reboot. That's all. It, it's the third generation of of. <laughs> That's the only the third? That's what it is. I thought or, we were the, or the seventh. Yeah, I don't know where we're at now. <laughs> That's so, Jason's uh, great grandson. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but you not least. I Somebody saw, out an I saw the original there. Halloween in the theater. That's how old I Ooh, am. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Yeah, I just boy. Watched that today, yes, sir. Hey. yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, Jamie Lee Curtis has some. Yeah, <laughs> yes, she does. Hell you know what? Yeah. What movie is she show? She shows Trading up. places. Trading places. places. There oh they my are. god! They I were pretty. That. They are pretty. Yes, so <laughs> pretty. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, God. Yeah. And so, it was in Haddonfield, Illinois. Right? Hey, easy said, check the yes. chat. He says, you're actually correct. And what's that? What you say, Chris? Easy's costume. We got one more. What the heck? I said, easy said, check the chat. He sent the costume. Is that a garbage hey, bag? Check pack? the highlights, man. What, the, what are we talking about? I, I'll, I'll check it out in a second. We got one more, uh, one more costume. From uh, one of the, she's she's a lurker too, so a lurker Keith is somebody who's in the chat, but they don't say anything. They, hey, they lurkers need fight. love too. Oh, yes, love. Lurkers need love too, and yeah. she needs love too. Holy Lord, she is a unicorn. <laughs> she can lurk anytime she wants. <laughs> right, right. 
Damn. That is Megan Alana as a unicorn. Hi, Megan. I think I love you. I, I will start to believe in unicorns. <laughs> well, let me tell you yes. why. But yeah, thank well, you, thank you, Megan. I think if, if, if that's it, I think it comes down to the two, the first and the last. It's between those, but I, I'm going to, geez, the last one's got me kind of, you know, tongue tied. So yeah, <laughs> a couple other things tied for sure. Not yeah, I'll go, I'm going to, I'll go. Hey, we, we, hey, look, we can have co. We can have co. Okay. I say Misty and uh, the Lurker. Yeah, Misty and the Lurker probably got it. That's like, my opinion. I love yeah. Lurker, though. <laughs> so, let, let me throw in a bonus one. Let me throw in a bonus one. Mr. Randy Watson. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. I decided long ago never to walk in any one shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, you can't take away my dignity. Because the greatest love of all is inside of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexy chocolate. chocolate! Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randy Watson. Yeah! <laughs> I decided long ago never to walk in any one shadow. That boy's if I good. Fail, if I succeed, he good. Can't take away my dignity <laughs> because the greatest love of all inside of me. Such a chuckle. And then you got you got to do the mic drop. <laughs> hey. I swear he wins it. He wins it because he performed. Yeah, that, 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 that's right. a clear cut that winner nice. on that one. Hey, I'm gonna give my honorable mission. Uh, okay. mention, mission. Mission. Foul mouth with the predator with the face plate. Then the you dig. Like, yeah, the double. The double, the double. Man, was beautiful. Yeah. I oh, forgot you had to see the about picture that. of the full you know, Frank, Frank, You get credit too, Frank. You know, you got to put the effort in. So I don't know. You got to upload it from the chat. I sent it in the chat. You did. Oh, you did. You sent it, bro. I don't see. see it. Yeah, it's in the chat. It's in the oh, chat. If I got to do like a performance, you know, I can just do like the ping. See if you can. I don't, I don't see that. I don't uh, see it. Yeah, that was good, too. That was good, too. I don't see it. Why don't you just it's put It's in the, the uh, uh, CCN chat. It's in the CCN chat, T. Oh. You got to right, share let's... it to this. Okay, let me or see. Or copy it and then, yeah. I'm a big alien versus predator. I love to say it, yeah. Two of the like greatest. Sci -fi, man. That's like I have, nice. and I saw Jesus, I am old. I saw Alien in the movie theater when I was in college because it when we were uh, on we'd go to a movie the night before a game as a as a team, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think we were in uh up north somewhere. And mm -hmm. you could, there was two movies that got out around the same time, and Alien was one of them, so I went and saw Alien. That one just blew my mind. And then we also went. Uh, we were actually oh, in Oregon. Oh, I know it Oregon. did. That big ugly ass thing. Yeah, we were in Oregon, and we went. I went. We saw um, Animal House. Oh, yeah. Lucy! And then my fellow oh, Lyman. Shit. My fellow Lyman. When uh, who was it? Was Donald Sutherland the professor? Yeah, and he's asking to get some pot from the kids <laughs> and get them high. He yelled out. They go horn the professor. <laughs> <laughs> right in the fucking theater, my coach comes up and goes, The professor, huh? That's good. I don't know. He's like, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, fellas, I'm going to go. Uh, thank okay. you for your time and for having me on the show. I Great much appreciate you, it. Man. We appreciate it, Keith. We had a lot of fun, yeah. man. We so had, had, had a lot of fun. So too. Much. Like, you've made happy Halloween. Like dreams come true. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've, had a, I, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks, Terrence. Thanks we'll have you on again soon, Keith. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, talk about Brian. I'll tell you who said that. Yeah, all right. And then we'll share. We'll share. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, fellas. Thank all you. Right, Keith. Take, Take it care. easy. Bye. Bye, Keith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Great. Yeah. Keith, great. great guy. Man. Great guy, man. He's oh, a lot man. of fun. And, uh, that it that that conversation was amazing and definitely eye-opening. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, we all knew they were cheap fucks of an organization, but god damn, dude, he just no holding back on that shit. Yeah, no. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Yo. This is 2023. He got drafted in 81. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and nothing's changed. This is just who they are. Yeah. Yeah, it don't matter which don't have... if you got George, Michael, George Michael. <laughs> George Michael. Freedom. Oh, no, nobody know that. So, George Michael, Jeff, it friend. don't matter which one. Hey, how about how about we hit some of those highlights while we're uh okay, I'm gonna wait, yeah, I, to get this, yeah. I, to get I got Keith you. You do your thing, T. I'm gonna hit the highlights. Do that. I want, I want to give Keith some. All right, let's hit these uh depressing ass fucking highlights. Oh, we talk about the low lights. Oh uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Hey T Nick, why are you on twice? T Nick, you're on twice, dude. What do you yes, got? I you know. got a very nice chin. I very know. nice chin. I know, I know, I know. All right, here hey, we man. go. Low key, I thought she was taking a piss. He drops a shot play. Downfield for Darnell Mooney. Running in with a flag. Was Mooney touched down by contact? He's still going. Now the whistle finally blows. Game is the bat. Major pressure. Can't get away. Better guy, better leader, captain, all those things. Big to Rashawn Johnson to throw two. No running back out of the back. I'm not sure I'm good with this stuff or not. Can you hear you? And here's Roshan Johnson with a bring seven to the line. Four of them come. They just pass the ball. <laughs> Michael attempt. Third and three. They're bringing some extra pressure. Herbert almost threw an interception. To a little bit later on here. It's third and six. Well, Bajan goes from the pocket. Nice throw to DJ Moore. Moore gets close to midfield. As he <laughs> He's special, special too. Bajan looking deep. He's taking a shot downfield. It was Jones fell down and couldn't hold on. Oh. <laughs> uh, do we have any more shots of Monty Python? <laughs> that was as wide open as you could get. Slip, a fall, a throw, a drop, a... Uh, they are just trying so hard to get something going in the right direction. Third and eight. Bajan throws. They just bring four, and Bajan throws complete. DJ Moore's got the first down. They pitch it to Darrington. Evans got a block on the edge, and Evans to the end zone. And where the Bears were reading all of that. Justin Jones of the ball comes out. And it looks like Chicago got on it. Great Mays for Carolina. Met on the edge gets bumped. Heavy contact over there. Unload on and go get some free agents as well. Bajan in the middle to commit again to the third and ten. Able to get it to Darrington Evans looking for a second touchdown. Chargers on the sideline. Inside run. Evans got the first down. Look right down the line. There we go. I feel good about that. It just it depresses and me. Yeah, I want to say about me. that is I want to mention Velvet Jones for a second. How do you drop a ball when you're already on the ground? <laughs> How the hell do you do that? It hits you right in the chest. Right in the bread basket. He like, dropped it. I, I guess that was that's a cue to say. There they go. But right, it, it's it I mean, wasn't. I mean, that irritated me. Yes, a lot of shit irritated me. The first fucking play of the game, Mooney doesn't get touched. Run the fucking ball into the end zone. You knew you didn't get touched. Why did you stop running? Shout out to Easy on them uh, on those highlights. Easy to a fucking job. Yeah, we can't go back to the highlight, Kevin, because I, I, I want to I want to bring up three things with the Velvet Jones. Three things. Three. The first one was you stumbled and fell. Yes, the ball was a little underthrown. It, it was underthrown because he was so wide open. All your job was to do was to make sure he can fucking catch the ball. It wasn't right. a little underthrown. It was a lot underthrown. It was a lot. <laughs> there was nobody near him. No, no, Frank, listen to me. 
<clears throat> it was so under thrown, it caused him to stumble and fall. But how the fuck yeah. did the ball cause yeah, him to stumble just and fucking... fall? He was running like he was. Because he was sitting this. up there. Instead of and him getting to led, he had, had to literally stop. Come he back stopped, to which made him yeah. fall. Because he has no fucking legs. But, oh, Bambi legs. I see what you did there. But my thing is, like I said, it's three points fucking to me. shot. It's three points to me. One, throw a better ball. Two, even if you're on the ground, that you got to catch that. You got to secure it. And three, if he was that wide open in man covers single high over the top, why not go back to it later on in the game? There's a lot of fucking questions on what ROC does and what he doesn't do. Oh, oh, and I'm only saying that because clearly he was able to stretch the defense and get over the top of man with single high over the top coverage. Man's on. Look, just I want. They still scored a touchdown on that drive though, didn't they? Or was that okay? No. That that was one thing I want to bring up too. Bajan did not have a good game. There, there's no question he did not. Have, he made some good mo- plays and everything like that. There were some good moments and everything. But that was dropped in the end zone. And didn't somebody else drop one that was like a 15, 20 yard game on the very next play? I thought, didn't Mooney drop one? Mooney, yeah, Mooney dropped one. And then he still marched him down to score a touchdown. So kudos for that. But like, fuck, dude. You what even you like go, slipping it back, 52 Lewis had an interception that he dropped. That was a key moment in the freaking game. That was hey, right in his fucking hey, game. Remember, he ain't been playing. He was on the. He, they dropped him to the practice squad. He ain't been fucking playing. Care. You're a millionaire. If the ball hits you in the fucking hands, you catch it. Oh, okay. Then we have to say that for San. Uh, I was gonna say San Diego for the Los Angeles Chargers too, because yeah, Tyson Bajan technically should have thrown five picks. Five. Five. Am I lying? Am I lying, foul? You're not. I'm pretty sure you are right with the five. I, 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 I know, I know one of them. I know one of them. Bro, I didn't even call you tonight because I knew he was going to be up and we got to go to work Monday. I knew. He was I know one work. of them. You're talking about like, and I, I'm not going to say it still wasn't a good throw or anything like that, too. But again, the guy fell and then tried waiting for the ball on his knees. When Bajan does not have Justin Fields' arm, you got to come back to that fucking ball. You got to come back. You got to break off and come back. You can't wait for that ball to come to you and you're just sitting here waiting for it. Anybody and, freaking go and I want to bring up a little bit of coaching foul. We, you know, you think like I do. We played together. All that success, let me not say success. All that vibe that you had with Tyler Scott, he gets he, what? That could have been the guy that you this your guy because the week before, all you did was keep Cole Komet in for chipping and blocking purposes. And I'm hey, Cole Komet, 10 targets, 10 receptions. I'm good with that. Your tight end can be your best friend, as Patrick Mahomes. That's not what we're saying. I want to talk about my tight end really quick, and I appreciate you giving no. him praise on that. I give him praise because but guess what? He did not have a good game. Had, he did not have a good game blocking. He missed a he, lot of fucking blocks. Yeah, the truth. He he hasn't he hasn't really had too many good games blocking recently. This blocking has been shitty. Recently, and well, that's like, one of the strengths that he does have. Huh? Last week, he had a great game blocking. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. No, he one 80% that, of the time. He didn't let up like anything. He went out into two routes, right? Yeah, there were maybe like one or two where he was a little slow on it, but still got it. Nah, but it was at the one same where, time. Uh, it was one where if he would have sat up there and held on to his man and continued to block his man, the running back would have been gone. He's he gone. Like I said, I'm not saying he's going to be perfect in blocking. Huh? He, he's it's not going to be perfect, no, not at but all. I think but that's more too as a play caller, fellas. Going, I agree with you on that, JB. He, he can chip. He can. I said. I said. I think that's more geared towards a play caller because he can chip, leak out. He can chip, do a stick, do a nod. Like there's other routes that he can run. If you're chipping. Knowing that you're getting rid of the ball, that's a lot different than keeping the tight end as an extra blocker for the full duration of the play. That's where I say I have a problem. Now, granted, hey, we threw the ball 37 times, y'all, but we were behind. So we 
we and people were like, why did you abandon the running game? Because like after the second quarter, you're we down were losing, 17 to nothing. to nothing. Yeah, when you're down 17 to nothing like that. In the yeah. second quarter, like you gotta you gotta make a break. And it flips yeah. over to the game before why they ran so much, because they were up early and they were able to run. You're but again, Frank, you're kind of further on my point because my point is this your offensive not your our our offensive coordinator seems to be one a front runner only if his system is working two <clears throat> adjustments that need to be made your very first play was a 41 yarder to darnell mooney and then you have three other targets with him and can't connect now one was on mooney because he dropped it <clears throat> excuse me shout out to Bajit. great pass you know what i also saw I saw Patrick Mahomes throw a touchdown of Sky Moore and he dropped it. It happened. But you know what? It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. One, two, three, four, five. That's too much. Hey, Getsy, when we say you need to get it, this is what we're talking about. You put Patrick, you put Tyson Bajit in a position where he had to throw more times in a catch up sequence. Than when you were managing the game. That's a problem for me. No, you're not right. 25 rush. Hey, hey, bro. 25 rushes, 70 yards? What is that? Against a Chargers team where you well, needed they, to keep their offense off the field. Well, the thing, the thing that I found so amazing, well, I wouldn't say it was amazing. I felt that it was so it, it really made no sense. You sit up there, you play the Raiders. Mm-hmm. You you fucking have so many damn toss plays. I haven't seen the Bears toss the ball to the outside like that that many motherfucking times. Since Matt then Forte. they did it in the fucking game. And it worked. And every time the two times they did it, it got shitload of yards. So what the fuck were you thinking, Gens? They did it two times this. If I'm not time. mistaken, that was Roshan's longest pa- uh, yeah. run, wasn't it? Yeah. He had like I think Shit, he had like no, a damn yards, like 10, 10, 10, 12 yards or something like that. Like it was it was a it was a first down for sure. Yeah. So I'm like, why is it that you sit up there, you call some good plays? Then then here we go. I swear this motherfucker with screens and jet sweeps. God damn. I'm tired of the fucking screens. I'm tired of the fucking jet sweeps. The shit getting old. At least if you you, you didn't do the tosses that was effective last week. You sit up there, you got behind, then you then your your head coach, he sits up there and he says to wait till you get down like damn near 24 fucking points before you want to start blitzing now. One sudden, blitz, one blitz oh, the whole first fucking half. The defense half. is getting stops. The defense is getting stops now all of a sudden. When they damn near went perfect in the first half. Like this, this coaching staff I have gone and set up there, like I like I tell everybody. I want to give him a shot. I give him a chance. This coaching staff showing that it is an inept coaching staff. They do not have what it sit up there and it takes to be successful. This offensive coordinator, I know everybody talking about this Bayesian versus Fields bullshit. You know, it's not no competition. Fields is the better quarterback. It's just that simple. Now, Bayesian may be able to get the ball out quicker, but Fields is the better quarterback. This coordinator is going to have whatever quarterback that you have back there, he is going to fuck them up because his play calling fucking sucks. It just fucking sucks. I, I just don't it's get terrible. how it it changes so much. Like you have success doing something, but then you don't do it the following week. Like I just like how you brought up the tosses. That worked so freaking well against the Raiders. And the Raiders don't have a bad front four. So, but it worked. But you literally ran two tosses all of this fucking game. What? It, did did you see the one? Were ten plus yards. What? Well, what was the one play that he did? Come on, because we we right here. Come on. Wait, what? Which, which one are you talking about? The the play where he sits up there. I think he handed it out to the running back or somebody, and Beijing goes out on a route. I said, wow. Oh, like, yeah. 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 And Mac is guarding. I said, that's some shit. If you're going to do that play, you do that shit with Justin Fields, a guy that's can, that a, can beat a the Matt, fucking guy. Right? 
Right. It was like a fit. It was like a reverse Philly <laughs> special. And that was that was straight out of a Matt Nagy playbook, and Mac knew exactly what was freaking happening. He exactly. gave it. You know who he did? He gave it to Darnell Mooney. That's what it was. Yeah, he Darnell gave it to Mooney. Mooney, Mooney went forward, out for the pass, but he was smart enough to sit up there and see that he had him covered, so he ran with the ball. Right, and that's what I'm saying. That's like a Philly special type deal. But but again, hey Luke gets it. Why are you getting cute with you a quarterback that you know? Everybody can say this, 21 or 29 for 162 on the Tutty. Everybody in this world can give you five different perspectives on that. Oh, he played well. Oh, he played great. Oh, he played okay. Oh, he was managing the game. Oh, this. The sh- the, the fire hit, the, 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 the his feet hit the flame today. And we said last week, I'm sorry, not today, Sunday. And we said last week, forget what you did before because now you're back to even. Remember, because he, he he didn't have a good showing against that. Uh, what, who was that? Was that Washington? No, that wasn't Washington. In relief, Minnesota. That was Minnesota. Minnesota. Receiving relief. The interception and the fumble. <clears throat> now, man, you you played well. You managed the game well. We won the game against the Raiders. Now you're back to zero. You're back even. Now you come in with some boys that are hungry because the loss that they just suffered, they probably shouldn't have lost. Because they, talking, have, you're talking about they have – You're talking about – Let's call it – Is it Brandon? Brandon State? He got a dumbass yeah. coach too. Yeah, he is. What in God's green earth made Luke Getze think that the play calling that he ran then was going to work against these guys. No, no question about that. You got to make adjustments. That's what coaches do. You adjust. Hey, 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 hey Frank, say, man. <clears throat> you did that against Max Crosby and a dumbass coach. Two things. Defensively, you're going against Keller Moore. If you know anything about Keller Moore, you go back to Dallas, he's throwing the ball all over the field. Absolutely. They're not they, if they if they get 50 yards rushing, he's happy. I think we got I think we gave up 74 because they didn't do a lot of running. You gave a quarterback 16 for 16, and the one in inter- the one incomplete he had was a call on us. Then the next one, okay, TJ Edwards should have intercepted. I'm not uh TJ Edwards, Lewis. Lewis should have been picked up. <clears throat> So he starts over, and then you look at us like, damn, this month. Hey, Justin Herbert is 20 or 21. Where's the pressure? Clean jersey, clean pocket, no pressures, no hurry. What are we doing? Zero blitzes. No, he he blitzed. What was that third quarter foul? Like, he's not the third quarter is when he finally started doing it and it started working. This guy has a broken thumb on his hand, and you are just going to drop four backs? It's. it's Pinky or something, pinky, right? It's on the left, but it's on the left hand. Okay. Yeah, it was off his throwing hand. I know that. Um, but still, it's it's going to yeah, be it's irritating true. when you're trying to take snaps and hold the ball and everything like that. It's going to be irritating. But you Correct. need to hit the guy, hit the freaking guy, touch him. Let's, the let's do this, man. Instead of beating a dead horse. Oh, it ain't dead yet. Yeah. Let's no, talk yeah, about. Is. Let's talk about. Uh, let's give predictions on the Saints game. We ain't even. I don't want to talk about the Chargers game no more. I'll let y'all do it because I got a flight to catch tomorrow. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, going to New Orleans now. No, I I canceled that shit. Is that why you constantly keep looking out the fucking window like Jason or somebody about to come get your ass? (laughs) You are looking out that window a lot, man. So, I mean, if you all want to keep talking about the Chargers, y'all have at it. I'm doing there's, there's really not nah. that much more to talk about. Nah, we, can, we can do some predictions. Here's, we can do here's some what, predictions. Is, I gotta has get has Fields bit. been ruled out? Like, has he been officially Fields ruled, ruled out? out. Okay, out. He was ruled out again. He's, out. He's ruled out, but then they say he was upgraded from out to questionable. So now they're playing the policy game with us. He ain't playing. Yeah, he, I, I, well, again, think of it logically. Justin Fields comes back off of a thumb injury. And the first game you come back off is one of the top defenses? Why? Like, why would you do that dumb shit? Like, why? Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, again, everybody that watches the show, everybody that messes with us, 
we want what's best for the Bears at all times. If Tyson Bajan is what's best for the Bears while we're dealing with this, so be it. But we're not delusional. No. So right now, Cam Hayward and them boys is coming in town. I'm sorry, we're going to they town. And yeah, they it's not coming here. No, and 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 and, and did not they just do something that they've never done in history with Alvin Kamara and them last week? Kamara finally seems like he's back, which that's not good. What do you think they're going to do with us? And Derek Carr? Like, this is the thing. Derek Carr, we can say what we want. He has not had a year. Cam Jordan, right. I'm sorry, easy. Cam Jordan, you're right. My bad. Yeah, Derek Carr has not had a year that people have expected from him so far. But you give him a clean pocket? Like you did fucking Herbert, you're going to get shredded the same exact freaking way. I say, man, Alvin Kamara, Thomas, Michael Thomas, Chris Olave. Is Chris Olave playing? I heard he was suspended for this game. The Saints said they weren't doing no further action. I I heard rumors, but I didn't. It was name Rashad, Rhea, 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 whatever, Rashid. They got got people. As a matter of fact, don't they get Jimmy Graham back? They do got Jimmy Graham back. They yeah. did. They did. They they got Jimmy Graham Graham back. Against back. So what you think Jimmy We're Graham be a red zone like, Jimmy Graham said this. I don't care what y'all do, 20 and in, put me in the game, give me the ball. When he was with us with the Bears. That's all he asked for. 20 and in, give put me, me in the game. And they would pull him out of the game when they were 20 and in. Or wouldn't throw to him. Or just wouldn't throw it, yeah. He wouldn't even run a route. They'll block. You him. think he's not gonna? He's not about to come out and try to prove something to the Bears? Well, it's not Matt Nagy, so hopefully, I don't think it's gonna That's be that much of a First of all, I'm gonna keep my comments to myself because we're doing good. But here we go again. Anybody that's watching, we beat the Raiders. The Raiders were in turmoil. You see, last time the Raiders came on, which was Monday night, you saw. Even Jimmy G couldn't get the ball to Devontae Adams in crunch time. And we beat that team and we're celebrating. We beat the little sisters of the poor. (coughs) A win is a win, true enough. Hey, kick it, fly the white flag. (coughs) How dare we come in thinking we was going to go toe-to-toe in a shootout with Justin Herbert. Say, man. Anybody who would have thought that, you are dumb as Play good. No, it was people that was like, oh, Bajan about to go for 300 yards. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a Bajan supporter. I like Bajan. He is a backup right now that from what you are seeing, hey, he could be a project and see what he's going to be in a couple of years and see what happens. But right now, no, he's not your guy. But when it comes down to it, and I said this, and I actually did pick the Bears to win because I thought our offensive coordinator had maybe a lick of fucking brains in that head of his, but she clearly doesn't. You needed to control the clock and slow the game down. Exactly. Herbert struggles. He struggles when you keep him on the sidelines for a long period of time. By doing that, you need a successful run game, which they did not have. And then most of all, your first two drives, you had over 55 yards of freaking penalties. And then all of a sudden you're down 17 to nothing. I guess what, Frank? That kind of scraps that hits principle, don't it? Oh, fuck the hits principle at this point. There is no fucking hits principle. Put an S in front of it. Matter of fact, we're going to do it like this. Hold on. Crazy Ace. Bajan. Damn. Bajan was going to go off. We all wanted him to play well, of course. We want him to win. Herbert, when pushed out the pocket and pressured his accuracy drop. You're right. But guess what? I can't wait to do that in the third quarter. Yeah. But at the same time, and I'm well, gonna you're say down this, 17-0. Nothing. Wasn't the first drive of the game, um, I think it was the second play, the first drop back he actually did. White or white hair got bulldozed the fuck over, and he couldn't even get to his second step before he was hit and taken down. Like I, I, I said it, the Raiders do not have a joke of a front four because they do have Crosby. But if you're gonna compare this front four to that front four. I mean, come on. And I don't know. Was that White here or was that Lucas Patrick who got bulldozed over? Regardless, whoever it was got bulldozed over. Here. The start of that game killed the game, and I knew it was over 
first. I mean, it, it, it's just this. They, like, they switch because one year will start, and then here the offensive coordinator's got to do something. Patrick came in, right? No, I thought Patrick started at center. Hmm? No, right here, right here was at the left guard position. Yeah, he's a left guard. Okay, right here was yeah. at the left. Oh, right, because Nate Davis was out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the simple fact is, is this: they they went to the shotgun too many times, did not go on the center enough. No play action, no rollouts. Should beat them. Offensive coordinator fucking sucks. Head coach better fire him, or his ass gonna get fired. The GM, you might need to fire the head coach, or you may get fired. Hey, it's just me, that hey, simple. Let me, hey, let me bring something to y'all attention real quick, because we're not about tanking on this show, and they just <laughs> put tanking. My trading for Montez Sweat. I like I like what we're doing. Is is sweating in Gakway enough? In my opinion. But here's the caveat. We have two wins. Guess who just won last week? Carolina. Guess who lost last week? Arizona. So now the number one and the number two pick as currently slated go to Carolina, which should be us. Then Arizona gets that second pick. Arizona can make some noise because guess what they just did? They just traded Josh Dobbs to Minnesota. Kyler Murray comes back in like four weeks. (laughs) They're tanking. They're tanking. We need to figure out what are we going to do? Because if we drop out that first five, I, I'm I'm not confident. I'm talking to my bros. I'm not. If we drop out of that first five, I'm not confident. No, oh, I'm You're not confident. I'm wrong on that. In what You're we not confident pick, in what? Because here's the thing: if we, <laughs> we just got Montez Sweat, but he's only basically he's a rental, right? Because after next year, he's gone, right? No, no. The, 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 trust me. They already got something in place. You don't trade a, a second round pick for a guy without knowing that you're going to sit up there and talk to his agent about signing. I didn't say you. I, that's how we think. But my point being is this he's coming to a team this year. We can't sell him on this year. We have to sell him on next year. You sell him on the money. The money's a given. I'm talking about. If we're if we're signing him for a one year and a half rental, he's not gonna stay. He's not. We better not. They're not, be they're not signing him. for a one. They're not signing for one year. <laughs> he better not. Give he him a, be a future uh, thing. A, long, a, th- a three or four year contract. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just talking about what they what they traded for. He's got to. Yeah, but that's what they're saying. They're not making. Ryan Poles is not gonna make that trade. Unless he's going to talk to his agent That's about right. a long-term contract. That's what he wants. And if we're willing now, to you want to know who's a fucking you want you want to know who's a rental? Chris Young is a fucking rental over there in San Francisco. Well, we knew they that don't have he, the money to pay him back. He's trying to get paid after next yeah. year. He's trying to get paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. You say Chase Young? Yeah, he he. They don't have the money to sign him back. Yeah. San Francisco, it, that's literally like win today. Yeah. That's literally they, what they're putting was. all the chips in to win this year. That's just a rental. That's a one year. That's just this half a uh, year rental. They're not going to be able to sign them back. What they don't did have they the money give to up? Sign them back. What did they give up? Second round a, pick. A, a third, third round, round pick. pick. Sorry, third, third. Third. Yeah, we, Chase was a third. Sweat was a second. Sweat got six and a half sacks this year, 35 over his career. Four years. That's, that's good money. My thing is this. With the defense that they're trying to run now, you have – now you're putting Sweat in, left or right, and Gahway, the other one. So two people you know for sure out the mix. Dominic Robinson won. Oh, yeah. He, like, it's – it's done. That was a bad. That was a bad tri- or a bad pick from Pace and Justin Jones. You know, Go. Justin Jones was. I don't know so much about Dominique Robinson. He hasn't really had an opportunity. Yeah, he's been getting opportunities, but the problem is he, you're not he seeing on the field anything because am I lying, Chris? When I say not doing anything in practices, either. they took Demarcus Walker from tackle and put him in end because Dominic Robinson wasn't doing that. Yeah. Nah, Demarcus Walker was starting at end. 
he he he's been starting at the end because they have. But he's more productive as a tackle. Yeah. And, and yeah, and I, oh, I agree. He is this more is, productive as a shit. You know what they can do? Point. They he's can take his ass from end again and, and, and move. Well, they could take his ass from end again and put his ass at the three technique and put Jones' ass on the fucking bench because he's ass. I'm 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 really I, I'm really anxious to see how this is gonna work. I mean, it's gonna be real early with it on Sunday, but I, I think so. this, you, this this is gonna Thank benefit free agent after this year. It's a, it's like a half a season rental. Yeah, it is. But I, I think they're gonna work Ooh. out a contract with him. That's their right. main. I point. thought so. But he's he's because he's a I, four year player. He's trying to get paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what I'm sitting up there saying, I wouldn't be surprised within the next week or so, or the next couple of days that you sit up there and read and say that the Chicago Bears and Montez Sweat have agreed to some type of contract. Yeah, we're we're hoping that that's what that's what I'm hoping. You're not going to give up a second round pick for a rental where you're going nowhere. I like that, but you're you again. You have to entice. <sighs> But I like if you look at what um, Crazy Ace just said, Yannick Dexter, Billing Sweat, Javon Dexter ain't really been getting on the field. If you really look yeah. at, he, he really has. And when he is, and when he did, you're noticing him though. He's, no, 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 he no, hasn't no. been playing to, up to par. It's the other kid. Um, help me out. Ah, uh, Zach Pickens. Pickens, yeah. Pickens has been playing better than Dexter. Dexter's been coming on these last few games. Like you're noticing him a little bit more. It's a it's a project for him, but I'm noticing him more. But I mean, I, I think I this think, is. I think I'm hoping. Charge. I'm hoping, but I think this is going to benefit Ngakwe a lot because when you think about all these teams where he did have success on, that was due to him having a good end on the other side, and he was getting I agree a lot with more one on one. But is he going? Is again, we're looking at if ifs were fifths, we'd all be drunk. You're trying to put something together now, either for the people or you're throwing shit to the <clears throat> the sticks. Yeah. Because regardless of what you're doing, you're telling me now, it's oh, it's now it's I need to get, now, I need to bolster my defense. We said that two years ago, you need to fix the defense. What are we talking about? But at the same time, it troubles me because guess what? The Bears gave permission to Jalen Johnson to seek a trade. The Bears gave Don't me. believe. Oh, my God. Y'all y'all really do be drinking the fucking Kool-Aid sometimes. That was a no, great no, move. I, I believe it because that's true. Great Just move. like in the it, NBA. It, it, the it, I, I'm, I'm happy to say, say I got a nice little hard context where that right. actually is true. They did that's give real. it. And it was due to a salary dispute yeah. on how much he wanted compared yeah. to how much Poles is willing to pay him. Exactly. So he and, said, that was, and that was a great move by Poles. Yeah, Poles basically said, yeah. if you think that you can get more elsewhere, go try. Because from exactly. what from what I'm seeing, from what set, I mean, and I want your guys' opinion on this too. Seventeen two a year, four years, and full incentives as well, and fully guaranteed. Are you paying that for somebody who has not had a complete season with the Chicago Bears? Nothing. I don't know. First of all, there there are very few players in the NFL that have. Fully guaranteed contracts. It's it's Jaylen happening Johnson. a lot more now. No, it's like three, right? Kirk yeah, it's Cousin starting being to happen one. now, which is yes. annoying. Deshaun the Watson, is, is yeah, Deshaun Watson was one yeah. big one. The thing is, is this: it's not going to happen, especially for a player that hasn't set up there and been healthy enough. So even though I like Jalen Johnson, Jalen Johnson is a very good cornerback. Jalen Johnson, I'm sorry, buddy, you will not be getting a full guarantee fucking contract. It was a nice try by you and your agent. But that shit ain't happening. Okay. From what I'm hearing, Bulls Bull, offered him two years fully, uh, full guaranteed pay, but he wasn't willing to go anywhere. Can we get can, because they want the longevity, they want the years. Can we put up Bullet's comment real quick, please? Yeah. We change coaches next year <laughs> or possibly GMs. What happens to all these drafted and signed players currently on the roster? Turnover is an MF. Bullets, I a thousand percent agree, which is why I'm saying to my brothers on the staff, what are we talking about? We're giving you this now. Like, <clears throat> I feel they feel pressure, like do something, win it now, or you're gone. Because you don't know. The- <laughs> I'll tell you that now. the like, coaches staff may be gone. I'm, polls ain't I, don't, I don't agree <laughs> with I don't agree with I'm sorry, I agree with you on polls. The staff myself. Hey, look, 
Getsy by. I, I truly oh, feel that. Is a game, but. Let me tell you something. Right now, Arizona got the first pick. Carolina got the second pick. We got the third pick, fourth pick, whatever. My concern is this. If you turn over the staff, that staff is not going to be able to pick their quarterback mm-hmm. or you have to pick up Justin and they are having have, that's the second regime is dealing with a quarterback that that regime did not pick. The problem is this. <coughs> Take Caleb Williams off the board. He and his dad have already said they're not coming. I don't want them anyway. People be like, oh, what about Drake May? Hey, Drake May may have good optics. Look at what happened to the last North Carolina quarterback we took. Yeah, but he has a lot more experience than that last North Carolina. I don't give a damn about that. You know what I give a damn about? You know what I give a damn about? Putting a proper coaching staff. I agree with that. Around an elite talent. I agree. Don't get rid of Justin, who you have seen flashes that can be elite for an unknown. I agree with that. That makes no sense. But you know what you can do? You can go off the Bears lore and say, guess what? I I fortified my defense. Rex Grossman was my quarterback, and we went to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You draft Javon Dexter. And we had a hell of a team with Mitch Trubisky as our quarterback, too. But that was due to a great defensive coach. There you go. You draft Javon Dexter. No, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. Yeah, I was just draft saying. Jared Verse. Mm-hmm. And you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Hey, Justin, I'm picking up your option. You got two years to get this right. Two years. Not for get, not for big money, but you got two years. Yeah, I'm not going to sign what you. You're, that's what you're doing now. You're giving no, him a defense. Mitch Trubisky had success because they had a defense. And I'm not saying that Justin is not inadequate, but a good defense would help. Am I not lying, fellas? Would it not? Would a good defense not? Um, help? I, I'm, I'm you're not lying at all on that one. But I, mean, I want I wanted to bring up something because I just downloaded a picture really quick, and I'm going to give shout out to everybody who commented on it because we had literally over 60 comments on it. So kudos to that, and not yeah, counting yeah. not counting when I posted it on Twitter as well when we had over uh, I think it was over 75 comments on it on Twitter too. So, and I know we were saying it was like well, yeah, coaching staff is gone. You know, polls is probably staying, but uh, I mean, what the fuck? He looks like he's about to jump out of that booth and kill somebody. Like, that is just a perfect snapshot picture of somebody who just like, I want to fire everybody. What What's your guys' take on this? I mean, yes, it, you can easily say that it's just a nice picture in the moment and everything, but we do actually have a video of it for 30 seconds of his face. It was that face for the whole freaking 30 seconds. God is upset. Don't like what he see. Shit, I'm about you to call it tonight. I got to get up out of here. I got to get up in the morning. All right, you're good, Fal. We'll call at you, fellas. All right, take care. Yes, sir. Hey, Frank, I'm going to say this. I don't know where T went. I know Fal got to go off. You got to catch a flight. T did? Yeah. The first step the Bears need to take is allow Ryan Pauls and Kevin Warren to do. No, wait, go back. Go, go back. Go back. Going back up. Oh, I, I thought you were just talking, not reading. No, I'm reading it. <laughs> to do his job by hiring a competent and experienced coach. I agree 100 percent with bullets. Hey, bullets, you're a thousand percent correct. My problem initially was why did you allow Ryan Poles, even if he didn't pick Ibra Flus, they were married together because of their agency. Mm-hmm. Why would they why would anybody with any inch of sense think that they could draft based upon need but yet give a coaching staff that's all rookies in the net yeah i agree with that if i'm drafting crazy, crazy league, i wanted crazy, I wanted, crazy I wanted to put the video up there but unfortunately 
I didn't have time to upload it on here. Ooh, so I, wish we could. I, I wish we could have. I wish we could have. Yeah. Because I'm I'm tired. Like Keith said, the perpetual we we on the hamster wheel, y'all. We on the hamster wheel of bears. Yeah. Um, just bears decisions, period. My concern is this. We're all up in arms right now. Like we traded for Montez Sweat. Like, oh shit, we got Montez Sweat. What is that going to do to improve the team long term? You still don't have quality tackles. How old is Monte Sweat? Like he's, he's only like twenty six, so he can't be that. Like twenty six, twenty seven is all I think you like twenty six. Then you need hey, you need a Monte Sweat. I'm not saying that, but my point is this: you bring him <laughs> in. What else are you giving him? Because you have to give him an incentive. Oh, to stay. Frank, yeah. you have to give him an incentive to resign and to sign him half the season, and we're not going nowhere. That's asinine. That's asinine. It's, I mean, you there, and I, I agree with what Fa was saying. Like, there, you're not giving up a second round pick for somebody that you're keeping as a rental when you are a one and five team. Or you you're should, but that doesn't guarantee he's going to sign. But I mean, at, at the same time, like you're you're going to work out an extension with him because he you oh. got the right guy because he's you're hoping yet yeah, nobody knows with this fucking organization what the hell they're going to do. But they had to speak to his agent and say, all right, I'm willing to go a second round pick. What are you looking as a deal? And they gave that number, and then maybe all right, we're gonna we're gonna do that, and we'll That's work right. it out. Let me tell you something. They did that because guess what? Let me go and get some bread from Chicago because I need to get the hell out of Washington. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, that could be all that is. <clears throat> and you're that right. can literally be. Did you hear Jonathan Allen two weeks ago? Yeah, I did. That team's fucked. Fire sale. Yeah, that team. In the next, in the next, you heard it here on the CCP first. In two to three weeks, Ron Rivera will be fired, and Eric Bieniemy will be promoted to the interim head coach. You heard it here first. Yeah. Because they're saying, remember, they got new ownership. That ownership is like, hey, damn all y'all, we're gonna clean house and do it our way. The difference between us is we didn't have new ownership. We had new lackeys. And anybody worth they salt can't sit up here and say, I'm going to start a new regime with all rookies. When is that in the history of sports? When has that ever worked? And their first step should be uh, getting rid of the name commanders. That should be their first step. Even if they did, you know what? The Washington football team. I um, actually like the Washington football team because they're so original. Washington Red Fins, whatever y'all want to do. If all Red I know is all I know is the Redskin like or Indian organization who own that name and everything are trying to sue Washington right now for getting rid of the name and, because all the people who said that's offensive, you're actually they got paid to freaking have that name. And again. Not trying to offend you, but the reason why I say are Washington Red Fins is because that's actually a business. And Red Fins is close to Red Skins, and it's just a play on words, and people will, 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 will I mean, join it. Whatever. They call them the Washington Tampons for all I call them. They are right now because they bleed. That, it's my point on that one. Um, all right. Do we want to get to some shout outs? I, we want to get to some shout outs. I wish we could have had. I, I really want us to keep Van Horn highlights because man, he was a mall. Did he make? Did he make Van Horn highlights? I don't know. Did we what? just not get to him? Let me look at the thing really quick. I didn't hear that they made a Van Horn highlight. It, it I just heard the team highlights. It said, oh, okay. He did not. He said he did not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't think. Maybe next time and we'll send it to him. But we'll get him on again for sure, and we'll make one. Yeah, but he should I, have a lot of freaking highlights of him freaking bulldozing people over. So when you talk. About what Darnell Wright would be. <clears throat> Darnell Wright needs to go talk to Big Cat. He needs to go talk, talk to John Tate because John Tate. Wish the Bears organization can bring those fuckers in to talk to Darnell Wright. And he needs to go talk to Keith Van Horn. Well, here's the thing: if the Bears are so goddamn dumb that you're not bringing the, the, yeah. the, the, the one of the greatest teams ever assembled in yeah. to coach up your youth, 
top down. Like, you're dumb. Yeah. I don't fucking get that at all. And we're going to keep losing until we get rid of those on high that are making decisions for the actual people that are playing the game. Like, I mean, you brought – you. I mean, I think this offseason you actually brought Matt Forte in here, didn't you, to talk to the whole running backs team. They love that, man. Guess what I'm saying? Hey, Matt Forte, <clears throat> what do I got to do to make you a running back coach? Well, that's what I just said with Keith Van Horn. I'd love to make you a freaking offensive line coach. Right that should have happened 20 years ago. Yeah, there's no question about that. You take your best and you have them teach the next regime to fucking come up. It's that's why so I would have loved to see like Olin Krutz after he left. I would have loved to see him come over and teach some hey, of the hey, offensive hey, line. Hey, Frank, I can go back to different sports. You can even give me hockey references. Magic Johnson has something to do with the Lakers. Larry Bird. Had something to do with the Celtics. Then he went to the Pacers. Michael Jordan, they took him away from the Bulls. Then, then that's the Chicago organizations. Uh, only Chicago does this dumb thing. <clears throat> and it's getting to the point now where we have this current team with some plug and play could be a lot better if we have better coaching. What did Keith? What did Keith just tell us? On the offensive line alone, why are you teaching this instead of this? And punch. He said mm-hmm. that a thirteen-year veteran that has a Super Bowl ring and should have been a perennial Pro Bowler because guess what? People don't know this. When Keith Van Horn was doing what he was doing at right tackle, and there was a lot of other right tackles doing the same thing. Yeah, that's one hundred percent right on that one. Jimbo Culver just spoiled us. Jay Hildenberg just spoiled us. Boyce and Thayer, I urge everybody to go look at some highlights. They didn't give a goddamn. You in front of me, you're about to lose. Hey, my shoulder hurt. I don't care. I got another one. <coughs> right? You don't say that anymore. That's what I'm saying. These guys were different. Their coaches we're different. You know what we coaching now? And how can I get my Instagram likes up? And get this hits principle. Eberflus has to go. Uh, the whole the whole coaching staff. Coaching. I kind of like the special teams coach. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, some sometimes if you bring in a new regime, they're gonna be like, hey, keep the special teams coach. I mean, whatever. I just need an OC. Delvin Jones. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I should have got – I want. I didn't have time to actually put this on, but um, for everybody who watches the after show and everything like that, Alex Brown said, he's like, Bayless Jones should not have a fucking job tomorrow. Oh, he said that? Yeah, he straight up said he should not have a job tomorrow. Like We've been saying that since last year, right, Frank? Thank you. I, it's it's unreal. Um, and Ryan Poles, you got to eat that one. Yeah, he does. And, he and does. we're not even talking about the drop touchdown. How do you get that penalty on the punt return and the man fair caught it? And yet here your dumb ass come and still run it. Now you give hey, give Justin Herbert the ball on the 45. I don't know. What did you think was gonna happen? I don't know what to fucking say. Oh, uh, whenever I talk about this game, I fucking want to punch my fucking computer. So uh let, let's let's get to some shout outs here. We can. um <sighs> You want me to start it off since you got the long violin one, so I'll start. Well, it off. if you want to, because I'm I'm going to the top, but yeah. we had a no, lot you, of beats. We had a yeah. lot of beats. Which is so, um first and foremost, I want to shout out the brothers, the four brothers, you know, not the movie. Um good movie though. How awesome was Keith Van Horn, man? That was a great guest. As we always have, we always seem to pull in some great freaking guests who just speak the truth, man. And that's what we do on here, speaking the truth. The truth of of what he could tell us, right? Mm -hmm. On air, off air. But just to have, like, like, let let me put things in perspective. The last time we were great, truly great, that man was great. That man helped us be great. Look at it. The right tackle position. You don't run 
Walter right, Walter left, Walter up the center. Unless your five linemen are solidified. Yep. I was going to say gangster. Guys. Gangsters actually sound more badass. Because so remember, that was called the Blues Brothers. The Black, <laughs> the Black and Blues Brothers. If you remember the poster, they were called the Black and Blues Brothers. The <laughs> linebacker crew, I think with a lineman or two, was called the Junkyard Dogs. And the whole solidifying team was called the Monsters of the Midway. We, I, I, I ain't seen no Monsters in the Midway in uh, uh, the Midway with Julius Jones or Justin Jones is your three technique. I ain't seen no monster. I ain't seen no monster at all. That's BS. So give that man his flowers while he's here. Hell, he already told you. If they try to come give me a job, I'm not taking it. But you know what? That's sad. Darnell Wright. Needs to go spend some time with Keith Van Horn. Who is it? Like Olin Kurtz, I know he spent time with Mustafa. And wasn't it one other person he spent time with? Who was that? Was that Braxton Jones? I don't want to say yes because I'm, I'm – could be. Could be, Frank. I'm God not damn. quite maybe sure. Love Olin and I want him on here, but maybe we shouldn't forget. Well, but here's the thing. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want an Olin Kurtz in your locker room? Absolutely, you want an Olin Kurtz in your locker room. Like, that's literally like telling Troy Palomalo or Air Reed, I don't want you to talk to my safety. What? <laughs> like, do you realize some reason the people became safeties is because of those? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's that's where I say I, I, I have the problem. And if that is an inherent problem from the Bears, which means above Karen Warren, uh, Kevin Warren, there's nothing we can do about the AI. But all I know is this. The last time we were great versus the last time we were relevant, none of those people are affiliated with this bear. Man. Last time we were great, 85 Super Bowl championship. Last time we were relevant, Levy Smith and them guys. Mm -hmm. And they had the locker room and they had the personalities. They had the people all around you, and we just don't have that right now. And we don't even allow those people to come and be infectious. No, it makes no mm -hmm. sense. I know. So we're not going to be the dead horse. <laughs> but, hey, I'm about to play my violin. All right, go for it. Do. Crazy Ace. He was talking before the even show came on. Love that guy. Easy. Check out Easy on Easy Does It. Actually, yeah, there's Easy right there. These aren't the bears. They are coast players and cos players. This guy, you know what? On Halloween, I'll allow that. Yeah, right. I'll allow that. Uh, Crazy Ace, I know is one. Ramon Acevedo is the same person. Thank you, Ace, on YouTube with the hearts. Thank you, love, yes sir. Shane Tob, thank you for checking in. We appreciate the love. And walk. Oh my God, Aunt Walker came back. Bear down, Aunt Walker. Thank you for coming in, chiming in. Aunt Walker had a lot to say. And Walker, hey, he was okay. We need to see some consistency from everyone. He's a DTQB. And Walker came in with that love. Velvet Jones' hands are effing slippery. You're right. And Walker, when you write, you're right. When you write, when you write, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, Samuel F. Blackwell, more affectionately known as Black Sam. Thank you for chiming in. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm losing my voice, but I. Uh, Apologize, y'all. Sounds like it's going away. I was yelling at some kids earlier. You know, I got a real job. <laughs> That's Halloween for you. Yeah, well. Hey, Lorenzo Clemens, our resident Big Ten ref. Thank you for chiming in. He's in NOLA right now. Hey, give me some pictures of some beignets and some etouffee, and I thank you. Aunt Stewart, who you can catch on the midweek, the midweek review with Aunt Stewart, Coach Chef, Sugar and Vodka. Catch that on Thursdays on the CCP Network. CCN, I'm sorry, CCN Network. Thank you. <coughs> Jeremy Bowman, thank you for checking in. Keith Sperry, that's my guy. Keith Sperry, thank you for checking in. We appreciate the love. Scott Hopkins. Hey, Donnie Starr. You know, we, we had Donnie at, uh, at um, Wiener Circle. Yeah, Donnie. I remember Donnie. Don we, we rocked yeah. with Donnie Heavy. No, I remember Donnie. Me and Donnie are going to hit up a Hawks game one of these days. I want to hit up a Hobbs game with you, Frank. Let's, go. Let's make that happen. Absolutely. Donnie Starr, thank you for checking in. Skylark99, always one. 
Tony Brown. I don't know if you see anything from uh, Tony Brown that you can put up. That's my cousin that lives in California. He's somewhere between San Diego and L.A. Tony Brown, TB. Thank you for chiming in. Welcome to the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. Appreciate any family support. Uh, Jeremy Ballman, thank you for chiming in. Hey, the crooked commits. Antonio Cantola chimed in. We appreciate the love. Thank you. Um, Tony Williams. I'm not familiar with Tony Williams. He says, happy Halloween, fellas. Tony could be new. We take all new ones. Thank you. What the crazy they say? My name is Tony. <laughs> You, you got to make sure you're crazy when you make that. You got to have a violin playing in the background. Got to have the violin playing in the background. But, but, but you know what? We're the only people who do it. We're the only show that does it. Yep. If we shout out in, to all of we're our gonna give All our people, no matter how long it takes, we're going to give you your just respect. Crazy. I want that rant that he just had right there. I want that to start off like the intro for and it. And guess what? Because <laughs> hey, he's not lying. We just ask you to like and subscribe. We not even gonna charge you. Hey, give me fifteen dollars for the super chat. No, we got super guests. Come on in, be a part of what we got going on. Spit your lit, talk your questions, talk your shit. We gonna put it up. Absolutely. Shout out to my brother from another bullets. Hey, that's my a one day one. We already know he was going crazy in the chat. Some guy named Frank O'Dowd who shows up sometimes. Hey, I like that guy. Frank he talks, O'Dowd. He ain't no lurker. He ain't no lurker. He actually talks, and I like I, I rock with him real heavy. Um, Duck D U C C Jones. <clears throat> Duck Jones, thank you for chiming in. We appreciate the love. Hey, Duck had a lot to say, and they were going back. Him, wait, Duck Crazy and Bullets were going back and forth for a hot second. We love that stuff, man. And I, that's that good it. banter. That's that good banter. I love yeah. it. I love it. We all hey, want the same thing. Hey, I'm going to do a double shout out. A crazy ace is on one. Crazy ace got everything rocking and rolling. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Love him to death, man. Love him to death. We're doing this business. All, all these new videos that you guys are seeing, like you're going to see shorts on YouTube and everything, on Facebook. All the graphic designs, all that shit, crazy does that stuff, and it looks incredible. Yeah. And we love him for we love them before he even did this stuff. He's incredible. the man, like yeah, he is him? easy. Like, come on with it, Matt Evans. Matt <clears throat> Evans was on one tonight. Thank you for chiming in, Matt Evans. Love to see. You. Um, Logan from Lo, remember Logan, Logan from yeah. last week? He had a nice rant with him, man. It was a great having him on. And and Logan, actually, just so you all know, when you chime in in the chat, if we feel we want you, you to, come able on. to come on and you're able to come on, we'll invite you on. Yeah. Ask Logan Frost. Last week, Logan was a first-time talker, subscriber. We put Logan on, and Logan told it told his truth. We hated him less. Well, <laughs> that was sarcasm, guys. Sarcasm. How about that? Do we hit him less than Don Burr? You know what? I wish Don Burr would come on here, but three at the weeks. same time, like three weeks. Yeah, I Don Burr. If you're lurking in the background, I'd love to have you on for that week going into the Lions game because it's not. If be I'm not mistaken, that's three, right, Frank? Three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Three weeks. That's pretty. Um, sure, right? Dark Specter, one of our P ones. Dark Specter sixteen. Thank you for chiming in. We appreciate the love. Um, I think we're rolling. We were, I told you crazy ace was on one. Like I got to give so much love to that brother. Like he was on. Man, he's on crazy game. ace. I got, he's Don still on. Hey, he's still, hey. he said, I got Don Burr blocked. So I won't never see his chance. Hey, no, no, no. Hey, unblock. Hey, I'm, I'm hoping that dude. sarcasm because I actually do like Don Burr. No, Don a good dude. Don it's good it's dude, entertaining, man. We got Packer fans who come on here and chime too. So you know, we shit. put one on. We put the damn Packers fan. Hey, I got a, got a pause. My mother's still watching. <laughs> but uh, oh god, <coughs> crazy was going crazy. Yeah. Crazy ace. And I'm like thinking I'm towards the bottom, and guess what? Here go crazy and easy again. <coughs> and my man Bullets, God bless you, sir. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Other than your P1. Yep. I'm all the way to the end. Um, again, crazy ace, bull is easy. Love y'all. Like, I'm reading what y'all want. Hey, easy said, Don Burns, the goat troll. That's freaking hilarious. Easy, we're going to talk offline. That's hilarious. Thank you for that, though. It made me feel good. Uh, I'm going to get yelled at from the wife for going to be so late. <laughs> you know what? We apologize. Hell, but when you have a when you have Keith Van Horn on, part of that 85 Bears Super Bowl team, you, you don't extend like your you extend your shit. Hey, you don't rush him. If he wants to talk for one hour, hour and a half, two, three out, you it seems to happen with a lot of our guests. They enjoy being on here and they stay on here a lot longer than they wanted to. Hey, baby, because this is CCP. Like what we, we talking about. We, we have no restrictions. You come on here and just be you, man. Just be you. And, and they love that because guess what? There's a lot of times where they can't speak their truths on certain media outlets. Yeah, no, we won't say their names. No, I'm going to tell you their names. Hell, <laughs> to hell with Mickey Mouse. True that. And if you all know who I'm talking about. They know who you're talking about. It is what it is. But in all seriousness, that's my rant. I got everybody that was in. Shout out to my last two. Shout out to SB, one of our P1s, <clears throat> always paying attention and watching. Never really sells too much, but always tells me on the song, lets me know, hey, I'm watching. Shout out to SB. And shout out to Miss Sandra, who the group affectionately knows. The podcast mom. That's the podcast mom. It's also my mom. And another shout out. Because if I say we only got one or two or maybe three people watching, it's my mom, it's SB, and it's Amber Enger and the Enger family who couldn't be with us tonight. But any other time. They will be watching it tomorrow, though. They'll Never, watch it tomorrow. Yeah, and they if they don't make it live, they always watch. So so shout out to the Enger family, SB, is, and Miss Sandra, affectionately known as my mom. And that's all, Ella. Violin's fucking that your voice is gone. That violin string has broken. <laughs> All right, I'll make mine uh quick shout outs here. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a just a couple sentimental type shout outs. Um I want to congratulate my cousin who just found out yesterday that she beat cancer. Hey, hey, come on, huge, huge hey, kudos for that. So I gotta give her a shout out. Um God bless another. Another sad shout out on this one. I don't know if anybody in the hockey news heard this. A former Pittsburgh Penguins player a few days ago died on the ice by getting his throat slit. I saw, you you posted that, right? Kit. Yeah. It was oh, he did die? very disturbing stuff. Um, he died. He literally died before he even got to the ambulance. It literally was almost ear to ear, completely from a hockey skate. He, he was. They escorted him off the ice, right? He got off the ice. He skated off the ice. Everybody ran out on the ice trying to hold his throat to try to prevent as much of it from coming out, but he did not make it, died in the ambulance. So, and I mean, I'm, I know a lot of people, too, sitting there is like, oh, my God, that guy should be arrested who did it. I mean, the guy did not who hit him did not mean to slit the guy's throat. Man. He kind of fell people, forward in his people leg. People don't understand way. the game of hockey and how fast pace it is. The guy went for a hip check where he's – hip checks meaning you're already leaning forward and you're trying to hit your hip into him. And he sidestepped his hip check and he lost his balance and the skate went straight up and straight up to his throat. Disgusting, sad story. So – I mean, he just literally had a fiance. They were supposed to get married in like a couple of months. So, I mean, it, it's some sad stuff. Sad stuff for sure. So, I want to get that, his was he too. a red? Was he a Detroit Red Wing? He was a Pittsburgh Penguin. Oh, um, it was Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was Pittsburgh. Detroit. Yes, yes. And he was he was twenty eight years old, so he was kind of a veteran. He wasn't playing in the NHL. He was playing on like the he was playing on like a junior team. Oh, he got moved up in like. Night? Yeah, he, no, it wasn't even like the AHL. It was like, I don't know, like he had a contract still with Pittsburgh, but he was still playing off another contract out in England for a team. 
So it wasn't even in America that he got it, but he was on the Pittsburgh Penguins for three years before he went out there. And then he got a contract to come back and he had to finish off the season. And then that happened. So. Cause I remember yeah. the video he got up, they, and he skated off. Like, yeah, he skated off. Like everybody his- literally had like half the both sides to both teams, like went up to him and tried holding his neck to try to prevent it. Other half of the teams were running to get the trainers to all bring them out on the ice as fast as they can. Cause that, that has happened before with this throat slit like that. I mean, I don't know the last person who actually died doing it. That was a long time ago. And I think it was a goalie. Mm. Um, but like that type situation. And I know everyone's just like, how can you prevent that? It's just like, I mean, they do. I know when I was a kid, I think all the way up to the age of 12 years old, you had to wear a net guard Mm -hmm. to help prevent stuff like that. But at the same time, hockey players, some hockey players don't even wear mouthpieces trying to force them to wear a net guard. I just, I don't see it's going to happen, but. So. um, and prayers to that absolutely, family. man. That's that's sad yeah. stuff for sure. Um, always, always on here. I give a shout out to uh, Misty and Mongo McMichaels. I loved your loved your costume, Misty. Um, other than that, hey, happy Halloween to everyone, all the kids, all the parents. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give one shout out to one of my neighbors. Okay. Um, Brandon and Lisa Caro, who made like a genius freaking idea when we all took the kids. We had like a group of like maybe 30 kids and all the parents all grouped together on our area to go trick or treating. And she actually had, um, it was called the ghost roulette where she went ghost, and got a, ghost of, roulette? Got a ghost roulette. She got a bunch of those little liquor bottles from the grocery mm-hmm. store and they put like a little ghost over the top and you had to just pick out your thing. So we were able to have a few drinks. We were going trick or treating in thirty degree weather in the snow, having a few drinks. That that helps. It does keep you warm. So huge shout out on that one. Um, other than that, a shout out to all, everyone on the show: JB, Fowl, Terrence. Get on your flight, dude. Um, other than that, I got nothing else. What about you? Anything? Um, shout out to the Bulls for oh, just for being me. stupid, but. I mean, they did win, didn't they? Did they win their last game? I, yeah, it was something like that. It's just, I mean, I, I try to see. They're just not fun to watch. It's it's not entertaining because it's just a boring-ass offensive system. And and I am a basketball fan. It's just the same shit. You brought back the same people. You do don't you don't use the same. You don't use the people that you should in specific ways to help you. I, Zach goes for 51-0 assists, but they lose by 15. Uh, what are we four games in now with the Bulls? Two and two, two and two. Yeah, two and two. Two and two. Um, our Wait, no, person, no, no. Is it two and two or one and three? Well, they have two wins because they won one in overtime too. That was Toronto. Caruso hit the shot. Yeah, but then they won this past game. No, they was, lost Detroit. Did they? No, in Indiana. Didn't they just beat Indiana? Or oh, they, they beat it. Yeah, so right. Two today's two. Tuesday. They beat yeah. Indiana yesterday. Yeah, I believe they're two and two. But I know it's early and everything, but when you have a certain somebody who comes out and says he wants 20 fucking plus million dollars, he has he has he has 12 points so far this year, guys. Four games, 12 points, and he wants 20 million dollars. Oh, one game he went over as a starter. Yep, he has zero points as a starter. I know it's four games in, but that guy isn't worth four million or isn't worth two million dollars, let alone twenty million dollars. Because he's and he's pouting. He's constantly pouting right now because he is not in there in the last five minutes of the game. What? Why would you? What are you gonna do? Because Caruso can give you better offense than you are right now. And some defense, shit. Yeah, I mean Patrick Williams is always gonna give you good defense. I, I'll give him that good defense. Good. Not it's okay. I mean, okay. Yeah, but Caruso healthy is the reason why this team is 2-2 two and two right now. Can I put something on your radar so we can go, go into next it. week? Go for it. Billy Donovan, he ain't going to make it to All-Star game. I don't think he will either. I hope to God he doesn't, and I don't think he will either. Because this – I know we're 2-2, two and two and that's not bad right now, but we could easily be 0-4. After the first game, they had a team meeting, a players-only meeting. And then Donovan praised 
that. He said, oh, that is great. That means that they care. It's like, no, that's not great. That means they didn't include you and you can go fuck yourself. That's what that means. Oh, I'm getting heated on the bowls. We'll get Kendall Gill back on and we'll talk some gear. We do got to get Kendall Gill back on and try to get Stacy King on too. Me and Adam too. We had Adam on. Adam Amin too. We try to get him back on as well. And all he does is he's he's. I don't think he'll guy. be able to come back on because he does football and basketball. That guy, that guy's we'll a workhorse. Figure, we'll figure it out. Maybe maybe the bye week of the Bears. Yeah, yeah. Try to squeeze him on for sure. All right. No, you got anything else? Um, that's it. Except for hey, for all those that are going to New Orleans, bear down, be safe, go to the French Quarter, enjoy yourself. Stop at Fat Tuesdays. Get you one of those slush you know drinks. Speaking of New Orleans, we never did give predictions. Oh. Well, we'll have to do that off air and send them over to Crazy so he can hit us up with that. Because, I, I mean, my quick little prediction 20, is. 20, 20, 20, 24, 24, 17. Saints. That's closer. I actually said 27, 17, Saints. Yeah, twenty four. Because Derek Carr been lighting the world on fire. Either. No, he's not. But he hasn't had. He hasn't played against our defense yet. But I'm hoping. I'm hoping Montez Sweet is going to be an addition that'll at least make him think. So hoping we'll see how it goes. But I am excited to see that. Regardless, I'm always excited for my Bears. Win, suck, lose, piece of shit. So I don't. My thing is this: you're watch. so abstract. No, obtuse. Because now I don't. You damn near look like you about to tank, but then you go and trade for Montez Sweat. Like you think something's gonna pop, and we're yeah. two. Were we two and five? Two and five, yeah. I, that, that's what I'm saying. Like you went and got Montez Sweat. A lot of people thought that they were gonna be sellers at this deadline. Well, we more got than ten games five. left. We got, hey Frank, we got ten games left. We cannot definitively say we will win five out of those ten games. To give us seven wins. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I really hope you're wrong. But at the same time, I would really like two top three picks. I would really like that. But we'll see how it goes. Because regardless, I think Carolina is going to be a very bad team. So I, I think well, we, we, will, worry about we will get – I do feel we will get one or two. Maybe we'll, lose, maybe we'll lose to Arizona. Maybe we'll lose to Arizona just to make sure. Carolina Wait, we play both of them. So hold on. Oh fuck, we do play both of them. Yes. Shit. I, I, damn it! I never want the Bears to lose. But oh, Trey Shaw just kicked in. I like the sweat trade, but we still need a three technique for this cover to the work. You're well, at the same time, at the same time, didn't we say with them getting this pick? They're gonna move um what's his name Collins back to the three where he has been doing very well at the three. Not Collins, Wa- uh, Demarcus Wa- Walker. Walker. Sorry, Walker. Yeah. But Billings has been the Keith Trailer Ted Washington of this mix right now because he's the one actually getting pressure, blowing stuff up, stopping the run. It's him. Yeah, it's him. It is. I love I love Billings and I love what he has done so far. All right, let's 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 finish her up. Anything else we got? I'm done. Let's let's, let's hit it, hit it, hit it. This has been a Chicago Clubhouse Network production. You're still here. It's over. Go home. And that that go 